Okay, to do this. Okay, <laughs> get the video and then we'll rock. Where the fuck is the video? Yeah, here we go. Okay. I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. The summer camp, kids. I hope you've packed your tight jean shorts and your tight virgin asses because you're about to get fucked by a machete as we return to Camp Crystal Lake to awaken Jason from his shallow underwater grave to raise hell on all you misbehaving kids, you fucking miscreants. That's our 15-minute uh, uh, profanity warning now, yeah, gone. I, I already did it. I know. It's not gone. It's hard, oh, well, man. Hard living. It's hard to, to not be who you are. Um, it is true. I, I was going to, I need to get sticky notes. I, I said that to the wife and I'm going to put like no swearing. Um, Don't mention this so often. <laughs> Watch for your ums. It's just like reminders of things that to, to tighten up the ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's I all like about your marks, man. You do actually. It's kind of scary looking to be honest. Um, yeah, welcome back, everybody. This is part two of our Friday the 13th deep dive, where we are going to take a look at Friday the 13th, part five, a new beginning. Friday the 13th, part six, Jason lives. Friday the 13th, part seven, the new blood. And Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason takes Manhattan. How do you feel about like the, the um, Friday the 13th? And then, like, the subtitle thing as well, like Jason Lives or Jason Takes Manhattan. How do you feel about that in movies? I actually don't mind that that much. You know, like, Scream does its own thing where it's, like, part four or five, six, whatever, right? But I think it's, I don't know, kind of, it is It is part of it is part of the style, especially of, like, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Puppet Master, um, even Child's Play, is it not? Kind of, I guess it's not. Uh, does Child's Play do? I don't think they do. No, they don't have like the subtitles. No, really. Um, yeah, Wishmaster is kind of like that. Yeah, I do kind of like it, and a lot of times, I mean, it's like horror can be seen as quite cringy and quite like um, how would I say it? I don't know, a little bit goofy, I guess. So I like sometimes when they lean into some of those titles. But the one that always sticks out in my mind that I absolutely despise is um. The Conjuring, the devil made me do it. Yeah, yeah. Why? I'm like, oh, I really don't like that one. I actually like the first two, and then I just find that they play too much into the Ed and Warren characters, and 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 it, a lot of it wasn't true. We'll talk about it at some point, I'm sure. Uh, I have some episodes about the real haunting, and I would like to talk about the the Warrens at some point. Uh, because I think it would be worth talking about, but yeah, it's it gets cheesier and in you know the Annabelle movie first one decent okay I didn't mind it thought it was kind of spooky second one terrible wasn't a fan of the nun either too much CGI you know I'd rather see practical effects like in Friday Thirteenth that we get than half this. Yes, I was just stuff. gonna say that's something we don't really have to worry about with Friday the Thirteenth um because basically everything is practical do we want to jump in then to the first movie we're going to cover let's do it and if uh if you are uh if you are listening i attempted to dress up like an 80s guy i had a plan to actual actually cut some jean shorts like super short and then just stand up in the middle of the stream and just shock everybody but i i i threw out all my bad jeans like literally i had a pair that i, I wore when i was uh ratty ratty piper for the halloween special that were just like these typical dad jeans and i must have thrown them out because i was going to cut those bad boys up but didn't work out that well so i i have my uh jean jacket and uh my my goofy hair uh i'm wearing a wig that's a mullet but it's a really bad mullet i kind of look like wayne from wayne's world you do a little bit actually to be fair i was trying to like place exactly who or what you look like but that's probably a good shout that hair is absolutely ridiculous for I'll anybody who's watching later. the video format uh, we would advise with some of these deep types as well, if you are listening audio only, obviously you can still listen along and we're quite happy to have all the audio listeners jump in. But um, there will be aspects of this where we'll be talking about things that we're showing on screen. 
So it's always probably advised to maybe check out the video format for some of these longer deep dives because we will be pulling stuff up on screen. So yeah, this mask is ridiculous, man. This this one, like the other one, shapes your face well, but this one looks like it's like a, it's like really like wide. Mm, it's just like a big fucking round. Yeah, I kind of like it though. Same. I don't know. There's something like about it where I'm like, I kind of like that look. Yeah, we're in the. Park, I think right? I would. Um, okay, so let's jump into the first movie we're going to cover in this part two of the deep dive, which is Friday the Thirteenth Part Five: A New Beginning. Um, it is the fifth installment in the Friday the 13th film series. So then we just have some, I suppose, basic um, stats and details about the movie. Released March 22nd, 1985. Directed by Danny Steinman. Produced by Timothy Silver. Uh, based on a screenplay by uh, David Cohen, Danny Steinman. Music, once again, by Har uh, Harry Manfredini. Let's see, production company Terror Inc., which is owned obviously by Sean Cunningham, distributed by Paramount Sean Pictures. Sean Cunningham. Yeah, I know, right? We have a runtime of 92 <laughs> minutes for this one. Uh, budget estimated at 2.2 million, and supposedly the box office grows somewhere around 22 million. So before we jump into just chatting back and forth, I'll just give everybody a really quick plot summary. So. The story follows Tommy Jarvis, who was traumatized by his encounter with Jason Voorhees in the previous films. Now a teenager, Tommy is sent to a halfway house for troubled youth, where a new series of murders begins, leading him to confront his fears and the possibility that Jason has returned. Yeah. Jason is back. But it's not really Jason, it's fucking Roy. <laughs> so what was your... Can you remember the first time you ever saw this movie or first experience with it or first memories of seeing this movie? So I actually do remember this quite vividly. Uh, you know, I was a weird, I was young. I don't know how old, maybe like 11 or some, some 12. And me and my buddy rented it from, uh, I think blockbuster or like the, the, the store down the street flicks or something. And uh, I remember watching it and, and that's why I've said that the, the part fives with memory Elm street and, Friday the 13th were my, the biggest disappointments to me. Uh, you know, one is where Freddy Krueger, obviously, if you can listen to that, that, listen to that deep dive, if you have not yet, uh, he has a, a child. Freddy is pregnant. Um, I'm just kidding, but somewhat. Uh, and then uh, and th this one, I remember watching as a kid, and I remember, like, I didn't mind it. Uh, I didn't mind with the direction it was headed. It was filmed, in, in my opinion, pretty decently. And then uh, at the end, you find out that it's Roy. And I remember being like, what the fuck, man? Why, where's Jason? And uh, But now as I've gotten older, I actually do enjoy it uh, to some extent. I actually, uh, it, it's kind of grown on me. That's why I've, like, I have an action figure. I have a mask just because I do actually enjoy this one more than I thought I would, especially as I got older. Do you remember where you were when you watched this? Uh, I, I don't know if I do, to be honest. I try to think back to like the first time I seen it or something like that, but I definitely something similar to you where I do have vivid memories of, and I was kind of the opposite. I think of what a lot of people were. I was like, huh, that was actually kind of cool. Cause I thought for the entire time, obviously I was at an age where I didn't pick up on all those like really overtly obvious, um, clues we were given where like Roy yeah, is showing so, up yeah. and like you know he like randomly looks into the camera and he's like or like there's a part where the sheriff says something and he's like huh and the sheriff's like what and he's like yeah, yeah. I, I thought know. you were talking to me sheriff <laughs> like, they keep like putting them in little weird scenes like that and I didn't pick up on it oh as a my kid. god okay I gotta switch something on the camera dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Tom is gone <laughs> Roy has gotten Tom Everybody, Tom is dead. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue on here. So we have a cast. Uh, John Shepard as Tommy Jarvis. Melanie Kinnaman. Right, well, well, what are you doing? I was just going to continue on. I didn't care. I was just going raw. <laughs> we could have cut that. 
Um, yeah, that should be fine. Now, I can't remember what setting it is that keeps the, the screen on. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, Roy, Roy boy, they do add that in where you're like starting to notice it. This jacket is so fucking hot, man. Oh, um, yeah, it's right. Like, obviously kind of like you said, the film received mostly negative reviews from critics, but, uh, like I think a lot of these things that has gained a cult following among film, uh, fans of the franchise, it was criticized for its departure from the previous films by introducing a new killer instead of Jason Voorhees. Despite the criticism, a new beginning was financially successful and continued the franchise's tradition of profitability. Yeah, for sure. And it's interesting because Corey Feldman was going to maybe reprise his role as Tommy Jarvis, would have made it a different movie to begin with, uh, but he was working on The Goonies. So the script was rewritten to have Feldman's character uh, as a limited uh, to a cameo, which you guys did get into it right away of uh, of him going to to Jason's grave. And uh, it would have been interesting to see if he did come back and they targeted more towards him being like a kind of like older, you know, kid. And uh, you know, it would have been a different story. Yeah. Like it, it's kind of, I suppose that's hindsight with everything, but it's, it's one of those things where you kind of wonder like what else could have been. Yeah. Um. Let's have a look here. I'm going to pull these up before we move it uh, any further. So let's take a look at some of the taglines for this movie. Tom's favorite part of every show that we do. Yeah, I love the taglines. My favorite. So, uh, yeah, for anyone watching the video format, you will see the taglines on screen now as well. So let's start. First up, we have Terror is Reborn. Was that crickets I heard? Yes. <laughs> um, second, we have if Jason still haunts you, you're not alone. Again, not not great. Uh, <laughs> Definitely not. A new beginning to the first step in terror. Uh, it's not that bad. It could be worse. Let, let me try that. Oh no, hold on. Let me finish them all actually first. So the last one is the mindless, murderous fury that was buried with Jason has been reborn and suddenly terror has become child's play. Don't like that one at all. Okay, so which is your favorite one? Probably New Beginning is uh, to the first step in terror is actually kind of clever. It's not bad, you know. It's not bad. To the first step in terror. Terror. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and reach at the end of that wonder. Yeah, I can, I can tell. Yeah, it's it. The opening scene is kind of awesome for what it is. You know, it's kind of creepy, but uh, what we do get in this movie is is skinny Jason. He's a pretty skinny yeah. boy. Yeah, he is yeah. actually. So we do get a pretty skinny Jason. You know, this movie does hold a special place in my heart, and I remember exactly where I was. You know, how do you feel about the costume? It's very that, simple. It's very yeah, that, simple. Like, kind of Michael Myersy kind of like jumpsuit kind of thing. There's I've said there's a part of me that likes this movie. I think mm. it's just like the kills are pretty decent. I think the acting is pretty decent. It, the him could have been he could have been better, but there's something about me that kind of likes the simplified look. You know, just this bald Same. skinny guy with it, it is weird because you get skinny Jason, he's not that hulking. And uh even the guy that played him was like a, a skinny guy. And then um, you know, pretty weird. And you have Tommy of, Jarvis who looks like Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, like a lot of people gave me shit for saying that I actually kind of enjoy this movie. And like, especially now, all these years removed from it, I really like the concept of like they were going. I mean, we're at part five at this stage. Yeah, yeah. So, and in pretty quick succession in the space of like four or five years, we've had five movies. And to be fair, this is quite like a left field idea. For 1985 to come up with a thing of like, like scream, kind of, yeah, kind of like a copycat killer. Now maybe it didn't land as well as they expected it to, yeah. but it was quite ambitious. In fairness, like I'll give, and the Friday franchise is like really has been like really consistent and good with that. Where each movie did try to make itself 
different its own thing that's why it's so weird when you see all the different jasons because people are like why is it why is jason so different in every movie and uh and and it, you hear like tom savini talk about it where he's like it was his different makeup artist so it's like it just kind of panned out the way it did and uh yeah i don't know it, it kind of is like that what scream end up coin coining and making better was the whole guess who killer and the whole time you do think that it it might be possible that it is tommy jarvis that is the killer after losing his mind, which could have been a weird direction for the movie, you know, who really knows, but, uh, yeah, he definitely looks like Dahmer in this, uh, in this movie. Like it's pretty spot on. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like I, I can't, I, I love in a way the character of Roy and the whole idea, to be honest, I'm not going to lie. I know it's, it's different. Right. And, and, I don't know, and obviously people didn't like it as much as they could have, but you know, it's it is it is what it is, and I it like I said, it grew on me. I'm just looking at it's a picture of him, so I can bring it out because it just it, his eyes look weird. It uh, but it is uh, it is, bring this up, just like it looks like he's cross-eyed, but I kind of like this look. There is a part of me that does does like this look. If Aaron would bring it up on screen, it would it would be helpful. Sorry, man. <laughs> i kind of like this look there's something about it and the mask being different and but his oh, look at his eyes look at his <laughs> it's definitely cross-eyed so pretty hey. like it, it is i don't know there's something about it that i do enjoy and it is kind of different and i kind of dig the mask you know so something um, different. yeah i don't know I, I just think it's it's unique um i kind of like how they really went for it Again, yeah. it probably didn't land as well as they expected the whole thing to. But I don't know. There's, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if it's nostalgia or what it is. But I actually had a really good time rewatching this. I forgot how much yeah. of a good time it is. You got the token black kid, man. Tommy scares Reg, Reggie. Reggie, uh, I think that thing's that's pretty funny. Where he's like, try, he tries to scare Tommy, and then Tommy does play this like, 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 like disturbed kind of. Like I'm saying, he looks like a, some sort of serial killer, and he like the guy. And I did write down the guy does do a, a fairly good job at acting. Like it's the acting is this is 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 somewhat subpar, but it's not bad. And I and I feel like I'd rather watch some of these people in in '80s movies act than some of the stuff coming out nowadays. And I thought it was he did the actor did do a good job. It's just weird when it then changes in seven. And there's one thing about Friday Thirteenth is is not consistent at all. <laughs> just never has been. That's that little um that little black hood Reggie Winter or whatever, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Reggie. I, Reggie. I, I love his um his lines where oh, yeah. like oh like I don't I don't want to get into that kind of stuff, but it is very like generic. Uh I can tell a white man wrote these lines for a black guy. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's what I was saying. This would be the token black kid. Yeah, right? it's but it's like really bad, like really obviously. Man, you are one scared cat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's Jesus yeah, so true. Christ. And even some of the lines with his uh, brother or whatever is very like generic, and you could just tell the time that now, like we, they're been told, but, like you gotta have at least like a bl like, one black guy in, in a, the movies. Okay, we we gotta we gotta you know push out diversity and stuff. So they at this time that you could see this in horror movies where they were doing this, right? And uh, even the Tommy's opening dream was a uh, was different in the original script, and arguably made more sense of him maybe being the, the, the suspect later on. And uh, you, obviously in the final chapter, as young Tommy is taken to the hospital as uh, Jason's corpse, then it suddenly fits. Uh, he has a fit of a psychotic rage. Young Tommy winds up attacking half the hospital staff, trying to get to the morgue, finding out if Jason's, uh, you know, bloody body is down there. Once he had finally found the body, Jason suddenly arises from the autopsy table. Immediately after this, the adult Tommy wakes up in a van en route to Pinehurst, uh, the Pinehurst house. That would have been interesting too, because if it, I don't know if it, it would have been just interesting to see if, uh, you know, if, if Corey Feldman did come back to play it and they focus more on him as a young kid would have been kind of something different because it is weird because they always focus that there's no we'll get into it in the next movie but it's uh there's only one movie where the kids are at camp and it actually is focused on like more or less like kids being at camp and what this movie is kind of supposed to be you know what i mean because it's yeah. mostly just a lot of the counselors and adults 
right? But there's probably things like there's definitely scenes cut in a lot of these movies where they could have made it more gory or there was different uh, scenes, uh, the kill scenes that they had to take out because everyone was afraid to get an X rating. And then I feel like it was definitely a little more strict than it is nowadays where they can allow some more like even the latest scream movie right number six where there's a lot of like stabbing and gutting and i feel like they're allowed to kind of push the boundaries a little more today than they did back then how do you feel about uh i suppose roy's like backstory and motivation i don't know it's okay uh i it's so funny because i remember where i was when i watched this movie right and the scene with joey the chocolate bar scene I remember me and my friend used to make fun of that like all the time. Like, you want my chocolate bar? I got some chocolate. You know, we're just like doing the scene or whatever. And I remember that scene specifically stuck out to me a lot of like the the guy losing his shit on him and then putting the axe in his back. And it it kind of makes sense a little bit of, of why Roy would want to take out revenge, you know, after they killed his big dumb yeah. son. You know what I mean? And then it's so funny. You also have like Ethel and her dirty, dumb son, Junior. You tell him, Ma. And she's like, would you shut the fuck up? <laughs> like there is some funny scenes within this and, and some decent like characters for what they were trying to create. I think it, it you know, it's it's kind of, there's some kind of funny, weird scenes in, in the film. And yeah, that Joey scene always stuck out to me when we were kids and we used to make fun of it because we thought it was ridiculous, obviously. It's got like chocolate all over his face. Yeah, it's, it's like overtly ridiculous. Yes. Um, there was something I had pulled up here. Let me see. Uh, just... Weird. Not counting laughing or yelling, the Tommy Jarvis character only says twenty four words throughout the whole movie. That's weird. That's that's I did not know that. Yeah. That yeah, that idea of like I, I was just I, I had something uh, in the notes here about uh, you know the character of Tommy originally intended to be developed further in future sequels as a new protagonist. Uh, it was abandoned due to mixed receptions. Yeah. Um, there's another one. The script underwent numerous rewrites. Early drafts included Tommy being the killer. This concept was later scrapped in favor of Roy Bonner's twist. I wonder what that conversation was like. The idea of having um, Tommy end up being the killer and then you know being like yeah no, I what, let's have roy barnes i know i don't know why they flipped it so much it made it because it, it would make sense just to make tommy the killer and then they could have carried on with the next movie actually being jason or whatever but it is kind of weird you know it's weird to keep the storyline a secret the film originally was called repetition after the david bowie song of the same name several of the other friday 13th films have used bowie songs as fake titles did not know that that's weird and we were talking about the uh, the idea of like the X rating because one month prior to the film's release in the U.S., the Motion Picture Association of America demanded that 16 scenes featuring sex or graphic violence be edited in order to merit an R rating instead of X. The film ultimately required nine trips to the MPAA before being granted an R rating. And then it's like you just you just imagine like what could have this look like? Uh, a lot of these movies, like, and I would love to see some of those scenes. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you do have that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, Sixteen that is, scenes is a lot, man. Yeah, it is. It's like excessive, like so weird. I'm just looking at some of the trivia here. We've we've yeah. covered some of this, and you just talked about some of it. But I'll just give a quick rundown. Budget of two million, approximately made just under twenty two million. The kill count is at twenty one, which we'll probably get into in a second. Yeah, I'm gonna get through the kill count. Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, it had. Uh, a lot of issues with the MPA, which is crazy. Um, well, that did not surprise me. The film was cast under the fake title repetition. Most of the actors didn't know they were working on a Friday the 13th movie <laughs> until they went cool. to shoot. That's actually kind of funny. Uh, this movie had more nudity and deaths than any previous installment at the time. Yeah, I love that. And I think a lot of that had to do with what many people considered a controversial decision for the director, which is Danny Steinman. He had a background in uh, adult films, which influenced his approach to the movie. His direction resulted in a film that is notably more explicit in terms of violence and sexual content compared to any previous movies. Maybe that's why I liked it. You know, maybe that's why I like it more. Yeah. Yeah. A maybe more, so. A little more nudity, you know, that's where uh, the, 
the mask has the blue markings instead of the normal red foreshadowing that Jason, uh, the real killer isn't Jason at all, which is interesting because it kind of makes sense of why they chose that because it is so different. Yeah. And I, I, that always stuck out to me too, when I watched it when I was younger and I was like really getting into uh, the horror and, and my love for it. And I just remember it, like, it was such a different thing that I wasn't sure if I even liked it. But it is weird how much it did grow on me. Uh, it's it's probably like my second or third favorite in the whole franchise. Just for like the idea of a stalking killer walking around and then, then massacring people. And I think because there were so many decent death scenes. And I w- I'm so curious to see what it would have been like if they if they had like all of the those scenes. The 16 that got cut would have been interesting. Um, did you have you already talked about the alternate ending? No. Uh, so, so apparently they had scripted this out, but it was never filmed or they never like tried to block it out running to film it where Pam finds Reggie's head in the refrigerator and nice. Tommy dressed as Jason pops out and attacks her. Weird. I don't know if I like that. Yeah. I feel like we'll, we'll, we'll stick with what we got. Um, Strange man. Yeah, it was critically panned upon release. Uh, since gained the cult following, fans appreciate its attempt to take the series in a new direction and its status yeah. as a unique entry in the franchise. Yeah, I have to say, I actually really do kind of dig. It's so thing. different than the rest of them. It really is, right? So, like, and there's some cool kills. Like, it, it, we'll get into it in a little bit, but I love like even that flare kill. Yeah. Um, you know, where like, it's, and there's this cool, and it's a quick shots because obviously they couldn't keep a lot in, but it's just unique. You can tell it's a fake head, and I love practical effects. And this scene where he does the belt around the eyes, yeah, I remember that scene. I remember vividly uh, when I was a kid, and I think people could probably guess why. Uh, you know, it's there is a lot of nudity in this film, but that scene where he gets his eyes crushed, I remember as a kid being like, "Oh, what?" The, like, you know what I mean? And it really invoking. Um, you know, you kind of uh, you're cringing a bit at the, at, the, at the thought of what that would be like, you know? Yeah, it's and it, it is very like out there and unique. And I feel like it's definitely one of the more not to say any of this stuff is sick, like any kills in a movie like this are quite yeah. graphic and sick. But I don't know, there's something about that one. The idea oh, of brutal. like having your, your face and your eyes like pulverized by a letter belt. Well, it's pretty crazy. You know the chick that does the, she's listening to the punk music and she's doing like the robot alone in her room. Yeah. Kind of weird, you know? So there was a scene, uh, the the actor Reggie talks about this because uh, I was watching some of the docs before we started. And uh, she was supposed to get uh, a knife or a machete in the vagina. She was supposed to be like spread eagle and then Jason shoves, uh, I think it's a machete inside of her, uh, her vagina, everybody. So imagine what we could have got. <laughs> Imagine what we could have got, you know. Um, I seen that uh, John Shepard, who played Tommy Jarvis, actually took his role so seriously that he volunteered at a state mental hospital to prepare. Wow, for- he did a pretty good job, though. Realistically, it, it would. It's so funny because I like him as Tommy, and then when we get into the sixth one, I like him as Tommy. I actually like them both, as weird as that yeah. is. <laughs> It's such yeah. a weird thing. That's why these movies are just uh, in my, uh, I was going to say play a drinking game on the last show now, including the one that we have of me saying nostalgic, but it's like these movies are nostalgic to me in the way that they're laid out and how they are so different. I think it's kind of part of the fun and, in, 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 you know, I, I do think that it adds to it. Sure. This could have been better. We got what we got though. And there is a huge cult following and love for, for all of these in some regard. And, uh, you know, there is hopefully still a chance to create um, something different, right? It's Roy on the spikes. Yeah, I, I don't know if we'll ever see something like this again. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't want to sound too dramatic and be like, yeah. oh, it's the best movie ever or anything. But, no, like, no. I feel like movies don't really get a chance to try like this one did anymore. I, I think it, it'd be shut yeah. down pretty quick. Like, they'd be like, there's no way. We're going to let you do a movie like this, dude. And there's something about like the cover too is just so different and weird. Like the, it's not even the mask. It's just like they picked a mask <laughs> off of like 
yeah. uh, some graphic site or something like that on the internet. And I don't even think the, the internet was still, it was around, but it wasn't like around today. And it is interesting because there's a lot of time and work. Uh, we'll talk about that went definitely into the costume of Jason and some of the, the effects and the makeup, uh, especially in the, in the next movies that we're going to be talking about, but there is something that's nostalgic about the covers I I just I don't know that feeling, man. When I was a kid, and you just you go to the store, and you're young, and I specifically remember this one called Flix, and there were there was always those kind of stores, those uh, not like Blockbuster, but the kind of mom and pop shops that they would have more horror movies, and especially some of the more obscure ones. And I remember seeing all the Friday Thirteenth laid out in on VHS in a row and just the cool art. I remember like picking up number five and just it being a very simple cover, but still intrigued me in a way. But that feeling of what I got when I was a kid, like looking at these movies, I can't replicate that nowadays. I feel like that when I, I haven't seen this one in so long, I kind of forgot about it. Um, and I, I love I the really 80s music it. too. Yeah. And like it, some it, of these are like fun. It definitely. And it's been a long time since I've watched the movie and the kind of, I don't know. I got that same feeling. I was like, damn, this kind of feels like, like a Friday night. I've just rented this and I yeah. don't really, obviously I knew Roy Burns was the killer and stuff, but I didn't really remember much of the movie. So it kind of felt like that feeling you got as a kid where you didn't know what to expect. There's and even it's so funny. The, even Chelsea was like, yeah, I was like, I forget some things that happened. She's like, you've seen these movies a million times. How do you forget? I'm like, weirdly, I just, like, there's some things I just don't, I'll, I won't remember actually, you know, what kill is when or what. And I'm like, even yeah. though I've seen these a million times and I still thoroughly enjoy watching them. Obviously after this, I think that I'll have to put it to rest for another year and then watch. I'll be, uh, you know, in the summer next year, watching them once again. But there's something that is kind of just fun in the music. There's, I think, when the chick is dancing, it's some like, oh, there's a Frankenstein or something weird like that. It's just very like 80s, like the one hit wonder band that made a song for like a horror movie. And you can definitely tell. And every song, and especially the later movies, like this one, the next one, is very, very much sounds the same. <laughs> like they all sound like the very generic, like 80s, like. Yeah, you know, kind of rock, pop rock kind of song. It's it's pretty funny. I enjoy it. That uh, like the image of Roy Burns with like the, I don't even know what you would call it. Like, cowl. Uh, yeah. The it's cowl like, was like split open. I that's what I told you. I remember like watching that, and being like pissed off when I was a kid. But that like since then has kind of become like a cult image. Like every time I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, that remember like. How much people hated the idea of that. I know. And it, especially because it was just some, like it wasn't Tommy. It was just someone, just some background character. And, you know, they, they did it before Scream did it really in some other films. But it, I don't know, some I just remembered just not liking it. <laughs> as yeah, it definitely doesn't, like I said, now I appreciate it and I like it. Maybe a lot of that has to do with nostalgia. But it definitely, mm. I can't imagine at the time being a fan of this franchise and maybe getting used to certain characters only for some just like kind of random dude that like you get a tiny bit of backstory about like, oh, this thing happened to his kid or whatever. And he just happened to go crazy and decided to dress up as Jason. And the big payoff is, oh yeah, it's that guy. Remember? Yeah. That's yeah. what it kind of feels like. It's like, oh, it's that guy. Like all oh, you're yeah. expecting to be like Tommy or maybe this person or that person or actual Jason or, Somebody like really like where you're gonna be going. That's just oh, like, crazy! Yeah, I didn't, yeah, it's not. It's just Roy. Roy. I didn't just even know. Was, I didn't even know his name was Roy. It's just like, oh, it's that dude. Yeah. Great. As where's and I used to, I used to love playing Roy in the game. He was like one of my favorite people to play because he does some pretty dope kills in the game. Like he has the. uh the shears or whatever, like the yeah, yeah. the garden shears. And like, there were some sweet kills in the game. Like he like cuts off your head and stuff, like just snips it off. And the thing is there are scenes though, that he has some uh, abnormal strength and kind of, and, and it shouldn't be able to considering he's just a guy. Like even he does get, uh, I found it funny when he gets hit by the backhoe the backhoe loader where like Reggie's driving it and just like slams into him. And I, I did write down Reggie does scream like a girl. There's one scene that he just, like high pitch screams like a little girl and i'm like that's fun i uh i will say i appreciate when they brought out like that new i think it was neca brought it out that roy burns figure 
I appreciate the way they they made his face, and then like you can like slip the plastic mask. Yeah, let me see if I have it. I dropped it. Oh. Um, I love that so much. For anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, Tom is probably going to pull it up now. Uh, if he has it there, I actually really want that. To be Do honest, you have this one? No, I don't. Ha- I literally just said that. I was like, I really want that. I don't have that. Is that fun? There is a, there's an antique store and they have like a bunch of cool horror stuff. So I was able to, Chelsea would get these things for like my birthday. And like, this one is pretty cool. Like he has the, you can take off the mask and stuff like that. And it's like Roy and underneath. It does it? Does it have the little Roy Burns? Yeah. Face? I've never opened it. And I don't really want to, you know I what I mean? That's all. That's like so. The, the all the ones that are like in the box, I'll open and look at and like put together just for fun. But these ones, because I have a Freddy no. one too, I just don't yeah. want to touch it. It's so like if, if you you know in a in 50 years, this is gonna be like a like a fun toy. You know, my kid's yeah. gonna get these and he's probably gonna tear them apart. It'll make me sad. But I'm like, these are daddy's toys, okay? These are not your right. toys, these are daddy's. Your, does your kid ever want to play with your horror stuff? Yeah, and I'm like, oof. Yikes. These are expensive toys. Kid. Yeah, my like, yikes, my man. He's like, why do you want them if we can't do anything with them? I was like, because I just want you to get away from them now because my anxiety is through the roof. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, it's it's just like so weird. For one, it like to be like, what? What's going on with that? Why? I know. Why you, like so protective over fucking dumbass toys. So weird, and then it's so funny because you do get like real Jason in clips of the scene, and it's not like a bad looking Jason when he's like hallucinating and seeing him. So it's it definitely an interesting, it, a different take. And I, it's so funny, even in my notes, I'm like, oh, wait, it's just Roy. <laughs> it's like right at the ending, and you're like, oh, so weird. Yeah, it, like, I don't know. Like I said, I love the idea of it, but I can see where critics and probably fans like were a bit just like at the end. The whole movie was so good, and it was like so many unique and cool kills, yes. and we had some really cool scenes and set pieces. and then. It all just kind of culminates in like, oh, is that guy? It's just all really. Right. So let's uh, break down some of the kills. Uh, this is pretty extensive. Machete to the stomach in Tommy's dream. I don't know if that's technically one, but Neil. Uh, Les, ice pick in the neck in Tommy's dream. I don't, know how, I don't know if you can count that, but I guess it's technically. It, it is a kill that you see, right? Joey acts to death, uh, technically not by the killer, but Vinny, road flare in the mouth. Pete, throat slashed with a machete. Billy acts to the back of the head. Uh, Lana acts to the chest, Raymond hunting knife in the stomach, Tina garden shears in the eyes. That one's also very fun just because she looks pretty messed up. She's like just naked on the bl- uh, blanket and it's very bright. Uh, so there's some cool Eddie head crushed with a leather strap against the tree. Um, uh, and, and there's a uh, yeah, throat slash D de- who's Oh, Damon demon spear to the chest through the outhouse wall. That one's fun. Cause that guy, his name is oh Damon, but it's, it's like, it's spelled demon. That he was a fun character. That guy's in like later movie. He's in other stuff too. Like he's a decent actor. He's been in some other stuff. Junior decapitated with the meat cleaver. Junior was a fun character. He's like, you know, the football helmet, you know, the old football helmet from like the twenties. It looks like one of those dudes that, you know, keep his brains in his head. Cause he's so dumb. And uh, Ethel Cleaver to the face of the window. It was good to see her die. She bothers me as a character. Uh, another Cleaver to the face to Jake. Uh, Robin Machete through the chest from behind the bed. Violet Machete to the stomach. A lot of machete kills. Duke found in an ambulance with sliced throat. Matt Railroad spike through the head in a in a, in a tree. Uh, George gouged, uh, uh, eyes gouged out, thrown out of a window, of course. And then um, Roy Pseudo Jason impaled by a tractor heron. Hero, weird. Track to Hero. I don't know how you say that. I'm not a farmer. A lot of deaths. A lot of kills. Twenty-one kills, technically, all over. Which is a lot when you think about it. I'm just looking at some of these kills here. Yeah, that's weird. The spelling on those na- that name. Yeah. Anta, Antia, Antia. Sir, I don't know. I can't remember how to. <laughs> An- Anita. And now it is Anita. Yeah. Anita. It's funny. There, I. It's funny. Some that I will never go away in, in Strange Brew and, and now obviously in this show is like pronouncing, especially last names. Or it's just my brain does not want to do it, even though it's like, and then Billy will say it. I'm like, oh, that does make sense. And then I just, I'm like, I'm over exaggerating the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. That it happens all the time. Too much. I know. It's funny how we both do that. So that's a lot of kills. Like, and I will give this one like, 
when I give part four, like a, a 8.5, this one I'll give like a 7.5 because it is how much I'll watch it and that I do enjoy all of the film. And I will say even the ending is fun with Tommy coming in and then the chick with the chainsaw. There's a lot of fun things. And that chainsaw scene uh, was actually uh, filmed on Halloween night in 1984. So there are some fun things. And then obviously that the worst part of this, in my opinion, is at the end where it's just like, oh, it's Roy. But yeah. it is a fun film for what it is. Like, like I said, now I love it because I'm like, yeah, it's Roy. So cool. Yeah. It's nostalgic. <laughs> but at the time, I know I didn't see it in 1985 or whatever, but I remember the first time I saw it, I was kind of just like, oh, I don't really get who that dude is or where did he come from? No. no. And as a kid, I was like, where's Jason? Where's my hero? Where's my hero? Okay. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? Yeah. We're, um, they get weirder as they go, everybody. It's not going to get any better from here. I, I just seen something before we I suppose cap this off. Um that they faced budget constraints that supposedly affected the production quality and special effects. I mean, if that was a if that was a greatly affected budget and they felt like the production quality and special effects were uh you know fucked up or whatever because of that, like I would have liked to have seen them get whatever budget they were initially expecting, because I feel like that was a pretty good effort. Yeah, I agree. I would I would be interested in seeing that and uh, wondering what it would be like. But that's what's within all these movies. Like when we talked about Friday th- or Nightmare on Elm Street, that there's there's so many restraints on certain certain movies, and then it's like it kind of ruins it. Yeah, yeah, it happens way too much. I'm going to give this one an eight point five. Really? Yeah, like I had probably way more fun. Than I should have rewatching this again, like way too much, like to the point where I'm super jealous of I don't have that mask, I don't have the Roy Barnes figure. I actually <laughs> have anything from a new yeah. beginning, which makes me like really you gotta like, look oh, for it, man. You gotta find it. I want something from that movie now. The mask is pretty cool. I realized yeah. that I must have nicked it because I had it's like I must have, well, I'm like realistically, I don't even know how it fixed it fix that but maybe it's more nostalgic now because i think yeah. if, if um anybody watching the video format of this we have a picture on screen right now which is them redesigning the mask and i i remember reading somewhere or hearing somewhere that when they redesigned the mask they like tom mentioned earlier actually they kind of made it a little bit more flat on the face and kind of rounded it out and made it Kind of, I don't, I don't want to say abnormally big, but they make it kind of a strange. They do make it; it's quite l- 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 larger than the other one. Like, yeah, you can't even tell on the camera, but like, it looks really dumb. Like, uh, it's like so wide. I don't know. Like at the same time, I'm looking at it, I'm like, that kind of looks really cool, though. I don't know. It's like it has really grown on me over the last couple of years. I know, and it's just so, it's just so weird because I remember like seeing it for the first time and being like. I don't really like it, but there's something about just the very f- like flat look with the blue and I don't know. It, it did grow on me and I remember being really like annoyed as a kid. So it's just so funny how your perspective changes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going with a, what did you give this? A seven? 7.5. 7. 5. Maybe and close I'm, to an eight. And I'm giving it an 8.5. So I feel like this was a pretty good, uh, overall it was a pretty enjoyable movie for both of us and definitely yeah. one i would recommend checking out um kind of want to watch it again to be honest if reggie's a great character there's just some good characters within this uh movie that uh, that are not too bad right and the weird beginning scene you kind of get like the dream sequence and then you get joey getting axed in the back which kind of leads up to what it actually is and that character just drove me nuts that's yeah. Um, yeah, overall, I do fuck with Roy Burns. I feel like he's <laughs> a character. Um, yeah, and I, I kind of like that this movie has gained a cult following over the years. There's a lot of people that love it now, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna give it an 8.5. I would push to even say maybe a nine just from rewatchability because I definitely probably will watch this one more than some of the others. <laughs> yes, um, and now, now we're on to uh part six, man. Jason lives. <laughs> This is uh, not gonna lie, pretty fun one, pretty fun one. That uh, remember that guy with the earring? Yeah, Yikes. flamboyant boy. He's a flamboyant boy. Oh, look at that one kill where he like cracks him over. Yeah. 
This Grim. is where we have like utility Jason. You know what I mean? He's got his, he's, he's like, he's going, he's coming to fix your, uh, your broken air conditioner. And, and it's, it is, it, this is just, uh, this is a bizarre one, but I kind I, everyone I dig you know, for, for its own kind of thing. And this is the one in the game where he was like, he, you could put traps out a lot of the times. Like he had a lot of traps that you could use because he kind of is utility Jason. He's got literally a utility belt and he switches it up, you know? Just so bizarre, and he has like the spear. And yeah, like, it's very different. I, yeah, it is. It's wild, and like, doesn't he has like the shirt tucked into the pants and shit? Yeah, it's so different, man. It is so different, and it's like very dark head. Like he's got that very like, yeah, like it's weird. Just because I guess sitting in the grave for so long, and I remember this poster, very nostalgic. As I said, very nostalgic. If I could do a Trump, I would, but I cannot. But very nostalgic. Okay, it's very, it's nice. It's a, it's a, it's a. I remember that cover as a kid, and it really uh, pulled me in. I was like, awesome. He lives. He's coming back. Fuck Roy, you know. But even though I liked Roy, poor Roy. Roy poor gets Roy. shit. So Roy much. boy. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're talking about Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Jason lives. Released on August first, nineteen eighty six. Directed by Tom McLaughlin. Uh, screenplay also by Tom. Music again by Harry Manfredini. Um, editing by Bruce Green, produced by Terror Inc. once again, and released by Paramount Pictures. Runtime of 86 minutes, estimated budget at in around $3 million, and it supposedly made around $19.4 million. It's pretty good, pretty good. In the United States. So before we chat about this, again, another quick plot summary. The yeah. film follows Tommy Jarvis, now an adult, who is determined to ensure that Jason Voorhees remains dead. He travels to Jason's grave with his friend Alan to cremate the supernatural undead killer. Jason resumes his murderous spree at a newly renamed Camp Forest Green, formerly Camp Crystal Lake. Tommy must now convince the authorities and locals of the renewed threat and find a way to stop Jason once again. And it is uh, it is interesting, right? Because like his mask is so different. Like it changes all the time. He doesn't have the the triangles uh by his eyes like uh, like the original one but they always keep like the cut mark into it and so it's like uh, it's still the same mask really because he was buried with it i guess it really does look that mask uh, i definitely like tommy better in this film kind of like i don't know there's something about the over exaggerated character that he does play but it's i said that it's too bad he couldn't be it couldn't be consistent but when he's like going to the grave he's gonna find jason we're gonna dig him up he's got you know and he's freaking out he literally goes berserk on jason's corpse like it's such a it's interesting beginning to how they bring him back and yeah. We see this later on where it's like, oh, they just electrocute him. That's how they bring him back. He's a zombie. And now, you know, he's he's alive because he gets electrocuted. We see that in Jason Takes Manhattan also. And, you know, it's such a weird thing. <laughs> like, one, um, you want guy. He wanted to make sure he was dead, right? And then he brings him back to life. Like, what an idiot. And, yeah, which is kind of weird. But I guess what probably would happen if some dumbass person became obsessed with something like this. Yes. Um. Yeah, this one came out to mixed to positive reviews. So it wasn't completely shit on. The critics were kind of, some were mixed and some were quite positive about it. Many appreciated the self-referential humor and the return to supernatural elements, which seemed to reinvigorate the series. It has since become a fan favorite, praised for its balance of horror and comedy. Yeah, it's not too bad. And I, I did write down, like, I wonder how many ways they thought about bringing Jason back, like how they could do it. And obviously it just, they they just figured out that the electricity thing, but I'm pretty sure in the the memories on whatever Crystal Lake or whatever that doc, I haven't yeah. seen it in a while, but it's very, it's it's long, everybody. It's like five hours. Uh, but I have watched it all the way through it. I think they mentioned that they were like toying over different ways that they could bring him back into the franchise after obviously... Roy got destroyed, but it's, I'm sure there was all sorts of different ideas, but electricity, I guess, makes the most sense. Yeah, I, I would love to know, like, to see the notebooks or whatever and the list of ideas that they had for that. I will yeah. also say, um, earlier today, before we recorded, I listened to the commentary track for this movie, and it's hilarious. The guys that are on it are actually really good, and like, it seems like they're really into it. You, I think yeah. it was yeah. recorded for the 
Scream Factory Friday the Thirteenth box set they done that time, that Blu-ray one. Um, so it's I, I want to say it's not new, like, but it's more modern. But in the last like ten years, or whatever, that's kind of fun. I would. Like, you can tell the guys still have fun rewatching it and chatting about it or whatever, uh, which I quite enjoy. Before we move into the next bit, let's pull up your favorite part of the show yet again. So we have our Jason Lives taglines. Evil lives forever. Mm. Not feeling. It. Fair enough. Um, if <laughs> if you think it's hard to keep a good man down, try keeping down a bad one. Oh, that one is awful. <laughs> That's so bad. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? I'm <laughs> kill or be killed. Oh, Billy, Billy boy. That's not the right one. You fool me, Tony. <laughs> uh, nothing this evil ever dies. Mm, no, no. <laughs> evil always rises again. It's not terrible. And our final one is The Nightmare Returns this summer. Can't, they can't, no, they can't use that one. It's terrible. Yeah, terrible. Oh no! I, I was talking about um, talking about like that 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 the some of the nostalgic songs that they play within these movies. Mm -hmm. It was this movie where it's like I'm a teenage Frankenstein when the guys in the RV. That's I was like this song is pretty dope. I wrote down. <laughs> so funny. There, yeah, like a lot of use of like hair metally kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah, that's so cool. I love some of the behind the scenes with him in the pool. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that image of him looking at the flames. Yeah, Those that's so cool. It's kind of a, a seems like a, an iconic photograph for some reason. This one was fun to film, so especially the ending is 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 like so cool. And it's it's there's some awesome kills in this. Like he he literally punches a hole in the one guy's stomach. That's fun. And then uh, the intro, the James Bond intro, is sick. I find that pretty dope. Where he like he comes into the screen and then cuts it, and then the blood pours down. I th I I thought that was actually really cool, and I really did enjoy that. Yeah, I feel like that was quite unique. But a lot of people do not like that. Really. Yeah, wow. a lot of people do not like that. This one is definitely like humorous in, in a lot of ways. Like the body toss with the spear is like hilarious, where he's like, oh, that's... And he just like tosses him over his shoulder. So good. Um, yeah, this marks the resurrection of Jason Voorhees as an undead supernatural entity, setting the tone for all of future installments. Technically, like yeah, that's pretty awesome. Director Tom McLaughlin drew, said he drew his inspiration from classic horror films and gothic horror, incorporating elements such as a stormy graveyard and lighting, lightning resurrection. Yeah, I could yeah, see that. Yeah. That's a fair yeah, point. Yeah. yeah, you think like Frankenstein stuff, obviously, coming back from the dead. Um, and then you have, obviously, the nostalgic old caretaker, the, the cemetery take, the, what do you call that? The, what, the groundsman? The grounds guy? The groundsman? He, he's like... yeah. This weird, you know, the guy that's, you know, I liked his character. He's like a drunk and he realizes that they, all these stupid kids digging up the, and he reburies the grave. I, yeah, I actually wrote down on my notes. I was like, is he somehow related to crazy Ralph or whatever? Oh, yeah. For, yeah, I know. That's his like a long lost cousin. You know, it's it seems like that, right? And as I said, this is the first time where there's actually kids at the camp. And I think it makes it a fun time, you know? Yeah. Um, like like we said, a uh, three million dollar budget, just under twenty million in the box office. Kill count of eighteen, which I'm sure Tom will probably get into shortly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tommy Jarvis is the only reoccurring protagonist in the series, played by three different actors. Kevin <laughs> Williamson cited this movie as his inspiration to write Scream in 1996. Wow, that's pretty oh. wild. Yeah, I, know I know it. It was based. He he re, he wrote it off an actual like serial killer. I can't remember which one. It's so the Gainesville, yeah, the Gainesville Ripper or whatever. But it, it is interesting that I think he was like watching this movie, and then what, I feel like he was doing that or something when he wrote it. Or at least um, the idea. The first and only film in the series to feature no nudity, also the lowest earning in the franchise. What? Although wow. these actors may not be connected. How do I miss that? Um, that is weird. That is weird. So there's another weird. strange little fact that ties in. Uh, the director. Of this movie, Tom McLaughlin was actually offered to direct Scream in 1996, but he turned it Interesting. down. Interesting. 
Uh, we'll have to bring this up on our next horror news, which um, it should be in a, probably slightly after this. Um, did you hear? Kevin Williamson is coming back. I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure. Yep. yep. That's going to be so different. I, I agree. I, I agreed with the people in the post that I was looking at that. Um, what's that called? Uh, the company that did the last two. Um, oh, Radio something. Radio silence. They did a bad job at hiding their killers. I agreed with that. With that. That's, you know, I was just, yeah. I, I was outside yesterday um, watching the sixth one, uh, we're hanging out at, um, I went for a night swim, smoked a cigar. It was a nice time. And I put scream six on and then I, I turned it off. Cause it was like, they were all hanging out, um, talking, uh, they had a friend over or whatever. It's just like, there's just like, just, 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 just like just stabbing and screaming. So I watched bad trip with Eric Andre, which was very funny outside. Cause they have a TV outside. So it was a nice, enjoyable night. Right. And like, I do. It is fun because I want. I was going to force Chelsea to watch a movie outside, but uh, we didn't get the chance to to do so. So I'm. I'm like, when we get back from the cottage, I'm going away to a, a like a a creepy camp. Not really. It's a. It's got a hot tub. It's a nice place, but it'll be it'll be fun after ca- talking about these to get away uh, at the end of the week and go to like a cabin in the woods by the lake. You know, I no, I would love to do that with friends, and then I would probably dress up like Jason at some point. You know, I'm gonna go and p- take a pee or something like that. If everyone. Give everyone mushrooms, and then yes. you don't take them, and you dress up with Jason. I'm like, uh, I'm like the Jason Voorhees, um, the Manson, where I like, I give everybody acid, but I don't take it, and I manipulate yeah. their minds. So uh, it's a good idea. There's so many great parts of this film, though. Like the the paintball scene is actually very funny, where you have like all the all different characters, the nerdy guy that has survived somehow. And I said that would be so much fun to do with your buddies, like especially dressing up like kind of a military fatigue mm-hmm. and uh, and actually going out and doing that as like a group. And then you have like the your dead bandana. It's uh, it's a very fun scene. I, I said I wrote, I wrote down that I love the guy freaking out about women like you need to go back to the kitchen where she belongs. And he's like so pissed off about her, like being like the head corporate person or whatever. And it's a good scene. I like it. Yeah, I thought that was unique. and like the kills included there are uh, quite fun unique. As well. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of fun kills in this one. Yeah, I agree. And this there's is just a this is a fun one, you know. I and, and even uh, supposedly the guy the the Graham uh, the actor C J Graham brought a menacing presence to the role, portraying Jason as a relentless and unstoppable force. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I really need to get that sound, don't I? Yeah. It's kind of at that stage now where I definitely need to get that sound. I didn't know um that having Alice Cooper contribute songs to the soundtrack was the the idea behind it was to um like popularize the film among a broader audience, which apparently when they got back whatever I don't know, like how they worked it out back then, but statistics or whatever, it like worked. Having his music in the soundtrack drew in. Yeah, the you see had. this in other movies too, right? Or especially in the eighties. Such a weird thing, though. I don't think I've ever been like, like if someone said to me, "I like Rob Zombie," I like Limp Bizkit, I like this, I like that. But if someone said like, "There's a horror movie coming out," and let's say I wasn't that interested in it, and they were like, "Yeah,", yeah but but Rob Zombie has a song in it. I wouldn't be like, oh, let me go see it. I know. I'd be like, cool. That's cool. Okay. If, I, if I happen to catch it at some point, great. And then if I don't, I don't care. And this is uh this is a movie too, where you see like Jason very, it's very, he's uh, in a lot of uh, bright scenes. So, yeah. and you see, he's mostly hidden in the darkness in a lot of other movies. And uh, this is uh this is like a first one where you really see him like in broad daylight. Yeah, like that image on screen right now in the, in the center where he's holding the severed arm. Like, that's yeah. broad daylight. I know. It's interesting to see. It's just it's just such a weird Jason, though, man. Like, his tight pants and his, his utility belt. And it's just such a different different take on his, like, costume, realistically. But they they kept it, like, almost like the original, but slightly tweaked it. And he's not as a, he's not as a, as big and hulking as he is in some of the other ones. You know what I mean? How do you feel about the kill with the face on the tree? I thought that's fun. That's a fun, fun kill. Yeah. 
Some some goofy and it uh that is uh that is a conspiracy symbol just so everybody knows. I didn't think you would uh fuck with that now to be honest. No. Uh, you, you know what it reminds me of, right? What's that oh. uh <laughs> what's that movie Castaway? <laughs> He's got Oh yeah, Wilson. Wilson on the <laughs> on the the ball or whatever, which uh is supposedly a conspiracy theory to do with adrenochrome and them removing the face of a child, so that's fun. Mm-hmm. Bow, bow, bow. That's fucking weird. Very um, weird. do you want to run down through the kills? Do you want me to do that? Yeah, let's uh let's run down some of the kills, everybody. Let's uh let's do it. Let's uh get some tension. Okay, first up, we got Alan. Heart ripped out. I really hope this is. Uh, I think this is free copy copyright use. No copyrights. No copyrights. So don't ever ever stop wearing. Um, Alan heart ripped out. Darren spear to the groin and stomach tossed aside. Lisbeth, Lisbeth, that's a weird name. Spear through the mouth. Nice. Bert arm ripped off, thrown into a tree. Nice. Stan and Katie and Larry triple decapitation with a machete. That's a very special kill. Everybody, Martin broken bottle through the throat. Pretty nice. Steve and Annette. Double impaled with a machete on their motorcycle. Very nice. Nikki, face crushed against the RV wall. Court, hunting knife in the head. Roy, oh, Roy's back, chopped into pieces. Appendages found in trees. Nice. Sissy, that's a fun name. Head ripped off. Paula, hacked with a machete. Officer Thornton, dart in the forehead. Officer Papa's, Papa's, that's his name. Head crushed in Jason's bare hands. That's nice. Sheriff Garris, Garris is his name. Bent backwards and broken in half. Pretty nice kill, like it. So weird. I don't know why I chose to do that, but I did. <laughs> that uh, that sheriff pissed me off, you know. But he, there's some funny things that he says. Like he's like, "You should uh, be careful. You'd be wearing your balls as earrings or whatever <laughs> to Tommy." But there's some about him where I'm like, "Happy." I'm surprised they kill him, but then I'm also happy to see him dead. You know what I mean? And he really got his comeuppance. Yeah, and there's like there's just some weird like very comedic kills. Like he, Jason's pulling that chick through the window. There's some like weird just i don't know it, it goes such a different direction uh and this you know when you actually have kids in this movie the little girl like has the machete she's like i found this i found this bloody machete you know, it's so weird but i do like the idea of having like the actual like kids at camp and how jason doesn't fuck with them because you know they didn't do anything to him he was one of them at one point but you think that with the, his facial deformities that he did have that you would have kids making fun of him you know what i mean yeah yeah I, I knew a girl, okay, and um, sorry, I, I'm not meaning to disparage anybody. There is obviously people with some pretty wild deformities. At some point, we'll talk about circus sideshow freaks uh, on Stranger Podcast. But there was this chick, and me and my friend used to say she looked like Jason. She, it was very scary looking little little girl. We we're in grade six. She was in our class. I don't know why, but she was there. And she literally had like one eye up higher than the other, one eye down, a big amorphous head. She looked like she looked like Jason Voorhees. Like I'm dead serious. It was like, scary. I because people will probably give me shit and it'll be like, oh, I can't believe you're smart and then laughing, but like <laughs> it's scary. It was scary. I don't know how to scary. Yeah, people have hardships. That's a very hardship yeah. in life. And uh I uh, remember as a kid. I remember my it's so sad. My friend told her to drink Windex at one and I was like, Man, we're in line. And then uh she was actually I think it was she's like, go she's like go drink Windex, Elise. And I was like, You're that's very mean, man. She'd probably not say that to somebody, but my friend was a big bully. He was also a broken person, so you know, hurt people, hurt people. hurt people. <laughs> so it's very, very true. So look at Jason, man. He was a hurt little boy that somehow grew into a large man in the middle of the lake, and uh, he, he was hurt, you know, by people, and he hurt people because he needed, he had to, he had to, you know, try to fill that 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 gap in his heart, you know. That's when he was floating around down in the bottom of that lake. He said to himself, he said. What do you say? I don't, it's cutting out. No, you gotta say it louder. Do you know that's happening to your uh, every time you hit something on your old caster as well? Weird, really? Yeah. Something I don't know why that's going on. Yeah, I noticed that earlier when you were pressing things. It, it was like it sounded like it was breaking up with all static. Weird. 
Yeah. What's going on? That's fucking weird. It's very that strange. Hmm. Weirdo. Why do I have all this weirdo stuff? It's so weird. Um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of dumb ways to die in this movie. Uh, did you did you like the the deputy's gun when he's got the little laser point on that he like loves? He like loves. He just got that laser scope thing. What is that like? That is I know. It's funny when he points that at Tommy's face. There is like is funny scenes within this, and Tommy's like. Who's like eyes wide and really weird. He he just looks so bizarre, and it's just like there's some. I I really do enjoy this movie. Yeah, yeah, it is enjoyable. I will give it that. It is enjoyable. There's so many things that are like seem really jarring to me though, where I'm like, okay, well, what's with the outfit? I know um, like that, that laser thing is another thing where I'm like, the the gun is like <laughs> the laser looks like a fucking. Because that's why what it was like back then, right? It's just oh, like oh, that is really out there. Um, it's, it's so funny. Cause then you get the iconic, I don't know if this is in any other, I think it is, I think it's in the fourth one, but you get the iconic where he's like raising up, like he's the undertaker. Uh, obviously yeah, that yeah, stole yeah. that from Jason, but when he's like laying down and then he kind of gets up without moving his arms or anything, it's just like a straight, like folded in half. Um, that's very iconic. Cause you think about it in the game, I don't know how much you play the game, but you have to like tap, tap, but people like keep hitting you down. And it used to piss me off. I was Jason. They just keep hitting you down and you have to like tap, 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 tap to try to get him to like sit up finally. Am I right in saying in this movie, I'm trying to think here, like pull up the costume again. He wears those, um, kind of yellow or Brown, like utility yeah. glove things. I don't like that at all. They're weird. There's a few scenes where he's like grabbing somebody and it really focuses in on those. And I'm like, huh. And he never had those before. Why did he have those? It's just really strange. Like it's like he's become like a landscaper or something overnight. And he has like the utility belt. And His costume is, uh, to be honest, to be honest, probably one of the worst in the whole franchise. And I know most people might, might, like there might be people like, hey, that's fine or whatever. I just don't, there's something about it where I just don't like it. You know, my favorite by far is probably like part four, just because that's like the OG Jason. But there's something about his like utility belt. Like you're not Batman, man. Harry, but what like what's in that? What's he's got knives. Um but he's got a he's got a little like, pocket knife. I don't know. The explanation, like what was why did they get you should Google that? Why did they give Jason a utility belt? <laughs> and fucking gloves and like a like an outdoorsy shirt. That he uh, has. Yeah, and it's not as dirty as you think it'd be, considering he is a literal corpse. Yeah, it's just very, very strange choice. Do you know what part of it I wonder? Is it to do with like budgets and stuff? The sense of okay, if we put gloves on him, then we don't have to do like hand prosthetics or makeup. So that's that. Yeah. yeah. Let's give him like long pants with no tears, so we don't have to do any like features on his legs or like rotten flesh. Let's do the same with the shirt. Let's make sure that the shirt is tucked into the gloves so they don't see his arms. Let's show let's make sure he's like nearly covered up to the right up to the neck with the shirt. Like he has the shirt buttoned up to the fucking top. Yeah, it's weird. I don't fucking like it. Do you think does NECA have a mask of this one? I would imagine so, yeah. Uh, look at that part six. Part of me kind of wants the figure with the fucking shitty tool belt thing and all. <laughs> I'm trying to look here. I don't know. Oh, yeah. A- I, I feel like I have that somewhere. I don't know if I do, but it looks so familiar. I actually might. I think I do have that figure. Oh, no, I don't. I've seen it in the store. I was going to buy it, actually. It was at that same uh, antique store. There, I, And we'll do we'll do a, an episode about toys um, at some point. Horror toy. I don't know, because I just really want to talk about toys. It sounds like the gayest like little kid thing in the world, but... What is that? I know. What? He's got like... Red I don't and like it. Something inside of the Jason, tool belt. Okay, part six deep. tool belt. Are they like fishing fucking lures or something? I hope not. Jason's Jason's going out in the town. Um, yeah, it's really weird. Why? Why? Even though I'm I'm looking at some people that are doing like uh, the costume. Here, I'll bring it up on on screen. And I I don't I don't I don't like it. There's something about it where it's just like. So that must be the neck and mask, maybe. But the tool belt is really jarring. Like, I don't know if I like that. It is like fishing lures. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? Why would he have that, man? Oh, no. It's is not it, good. Wait. So, like, are they trying to make out, like, oh, he's like a hunter? Like, he's out in, like, the lake. 
fishing. Yeah, they're supposed to be uh, survive. So he has to eat now. So now you've ruined the concept of being supernatural. So now he has to go out and like catch fish and like like so make weird. them and stuff, which just makes me cringe. Yeah, I don't really like it. I literally have that knife. <laughs> like you never want to picture any of your favorite like horror villains or anything like having to stop and take a piss or like go and take a dump. Yeah, I know. Or do any like mundane things because it just ruins it. Like that's why for me, even in the Halloween franchise, when they had parts where like Michael would drive cars, I'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm cringing so hard right now." The oh, idea I know. I, I and and, uh, and to be honest, it some of it makes sense why Michael would drive a car, but I don't like it. Like, in, I think it was uh, number number six or whatever. Oh, look at this fun figure. Whoa! See <laughs> so, you in the school. It looked like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's literally that's what she looked like. I'm not lying, and she barely had any hair. Uh, it was oh, it was like it, it was freaky. Do you know what's yeah, crazy? She, though? Like as a kid, something like that. Like I remember, over the course of being a kid, I maybe seen one or two other kids who had stuff like that wrong with them, and I just remember how scared I was about the whole concept. Where I was like, Jesus Christ, I was what's going on with you. Yeah, and because you don't really understand, you know, when somebody does look like this in real life, and it's like, it. What is that a product of? Is it inbreeding? Because that definitely took place. Look at this, man. There's some weird things out there to do with this movie. I want this, bro. I said I wanted a little Jason figure, but I want like Tommy Jarvis, Jason. That's fine. I'm gonna get you this for your birthday. Oh, thanks, Grace. <laughs> <That's sick. laughs> so weird, man. Um. Yeah, it just it, the tool belt does bother me. I don't know why. I'm sure there's people that are like, it's fine. But he never had one in prior films. And then all of a sudden now he has a tool belt. And then we don't see it later on at all. And the gloves, the gloves bug me. I'm looking at pictures of the gloves now. And I'm like, it bothers me, man. They're very big. It's like those big, like you're going to like fucking do some forestry or landscaping. It's so weird. I don't uh, know, like wel welders gloves or something. I'm like, whoa, those are like... Yeah, the sheriff does kind of oh, kick his ass, though, in the movie, though. I, I Did he go to, like, the local, like, general store and be like, okay, right, I need a tool belt, I need some gloves, I need fishing lures? Yeah, I see someone with the belt and they have, like, bullets. I'm like, that would be way worse. At least he didn't have a fucking gun. Oh, could you? That That's one way to instantly just ruin the entire franchise. Is to be like, Jason just starts, like, using, like, a, like a, he's got, like, an AK-47 or something. You know what I'm surprised they haven't actually done that somebody like in a fan film, maybe it exists already, but somebody hasn't made him kind of like a hunter character would have given him like a hunting rifle and like more of that like tool belty hunting gear as like yeah. his excuse to survive. I heard that Craven was really bad. Bad new movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's disappointing. Check this out. So this is what the 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 fishing lures are, which I guess make a little more sense, I think. They're like kind of like spears, little oh, spears. Okay. That, so I'm okay. like, eh. I don't hate that as much then. But I just don't understand why he has them. Is my guff, you know? Why? Yeah. It's, why it's, does it he need a belt? Like... Jason See, doesn't need a belt and keep his pants up. When you when you do this to a, an existing a horror character or a franchise right and you try to like reinvent the wheel and give him a new costume or a new look you've got to expect that the fans love these characters so much that they're going to ask the question i know to whoever was coming up with this idea back in the 80s or whatever was probably like we'll just give him a tool belt we'll give him some fishing lower dart things we'll give him a spear we'll give him some cool gloves and a shirt and like nobody's going to care because jason's back not realizing like the, a lot of the hardcore audience will be like, now I want an explanation for why. Why does he have this? I know. It's so weird. Remind me at the end of the film or at end of the film, end of the this deep dive. I'm going to bring up the different faces of Jason and we'll pick which oh, one yeah. we like the best. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Um, So we'll do uh, that in the end. But so out of 10 bloody fishing lure darts. What are you giving this one? I have to try to be critical because I do love these movies. Um, you know, the ending is pretty dope uh, with Tommy and the gasoline. Like, there, there, it's it. I find that that is an enjoyable ending. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Chick does a terrible. Oh, wow. I was like, what did I write down? Oh, that, that girl that tries to save Tommy, she literally does a belly flop when she jumps in the pool to save him. It's actually very funny that they didn't change that because she literally just jumps and goes like right flat on the water. And, uh, and then there's some cool scenes, you know, when Tommy's like, come on, maggot head. And he's going to like, he has this whole elaborate plan. And then Jason is slowly walks in the water and disappears. Like the ending is very fun. They put a lot of time and effort and effects into doing it, especially even adding the fire. They could have went a little more cheap and I think it was enjoyable. Uh, but I do give it, this is a fun movie. And then you got the propeller snapping his neck. It's pretty brutal. I think there's some cool things about this. That's why I'll give it, um, I'll give it, uh, I'll give it, an, I can't, I'll give it an eight, even though I, I was going to say part five, I, I enjoy more, but this is realistically, this is more of a fun movie, you know, that you go, ha- you could hang out yeah. with your friends and, and it's just kind of goofy and fun. It would be a good movie to watch outside by the fire with your, your homies. You know, it is, it's a fun one out of the franchise. I'll, I'll say that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go slightly lower on this one from the last time. I'm gonna go to seven point five. Still, like relatively high, I think, but yeah, yeah. just a little bit shy of my my boy Roy Burns. <laughs> my uh, boy, my boy Roy. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I wonder if there's someone out there that just loves Roy way more than Jason and <laughs> wants to see nothing but Roy. We want Roy. We want Roy. <laughs> he comes back from the dead. He's got all the spike holes through him and stuff. And kills so, the actual Jason. I'm gonna make a, a yeah. fan movie where I resurrect yeah. Roy Burns. Yeah, and he kicks what the I'm living gonna... shit out of Jason. Yeah, like what Buster I'm gonna Rhymes do is Halloween. My movie is gonna start with Jason comes back. He starts killing people again, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, what are we gonna do? We've tried everything to defeat Jason, man." And yeah. then I'm gonna go. <laughs> I know what to do, and then I'm gonna resurrect Roy Burns. How are you gonna He's... resurrect him? He's gonna come back, and then we're going. I'm gonna get my dog to piss on him. Oh like, yeah, it. it's terrible, yeah, terrible like, way to bring back Freddy Krueger. So bad. And um, gonna bring back Roy Burns, and then he's gonna team up with us, and he's gonna kill Jason for us, like Freddy versus Jason. That that's a great idea. Let's uh, let's market yeah. that. Let's see. Does anyone want to bankroll us? <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it? <laughs> the return of Roy boy. <laughs> um, so weird. <laughs> ooh, Friday the 13th part. What fucking part is it at this stage? Uh, be 11 or something. Bring this up on screen. Friday the 13th part 11. Uh, Jesus. I don't know. What oh, whoa. It. Whoa. <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a portal. Let me, uh, let, sorry. That I, could have been really bad. If I was looking at fucking Tom's spread ass. <laughs> It's so weird. Uh, here, let's uh, <laughs> let's bring that up because that was not good. Jesus. I don't know what happened. Why is it? It's not letting me bring up. It is this... your nudes on screen. <laughs> it's so weird. Here, bring it up now. <laughs> there you go. You should get this action figure. <laughs> Just look that. at Roy's face, man. I want that so much, man. That's all I can think about. Is that I want forty that bucks, so- man? Forty bucks. On uh, on Wish, so I don't know Jeez. what it's going to look like when nice. it comes. <laughs> so do you know what I really wanted to do one time for, and I thought it'd be really funny content, but it it can only happen if you, the fans, help out. Where yeah. we were to like say buy like in bulk, buy like a box of horror collectibles from like Wish or somewhere. Yeah, I just see and what have, they look like. And have them shipped to each of us, like different things, and then open them on like a live stream or whatever and like review them as we open them. I think that'd be very funny. There, it, you imagine like some of them terrible like Jason masks or like Michael Myers masks and figures and stuff? I'm trying to look up some right now. I can't really find any. Uh, because I was trying to look up like just just the ones that were obviously marketed. And I can't really find too many, actually. A lot of them are actually dope looking, not going to lie. The only one that's kind of weird is Roy. Poor Roy. Man, why do we have toys and we're adults? That's not good, man. I know, yeah, it's fucking weird, right? Oh, man. All right, so we we yeah. on, on to the next. We had that old dude in fucking, at the start of House of a Thousand Corpses, where they're, like, talking about um 
he's like they're talking about some weirdo and he's like yeah yeah they, they found him with a planet of the apes doll stuck up his asshole <laughs> yeah, yeah. so weird man that's so funny <laughs> okay so we're moving on to the sequel to this which is part seven the new blood the new blood man we're back we're here we're what jason Voorhees. this is uh this is a. Uh, they get weirder as they go. Not gonna yeah. lie. Uh, released on May thirteenth, nineteen eighty-eight. Directed by John Carl Buschler, I think. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, music once again by Harry Manfredini. And that guy's in all of these. This one's Pro- definitely more eighties. Produced and distributed by Paramount Pictures this time. Uh, runtime of 88 minutes, estimated budget of 2.8 million, and made approximately 19.1 million at the box office. So they're making around the same amount of money every time they release, which is probably quite good back in the 80s, considering releasing these every like 12 months. Um, yeah, this is, and Jason's got a pretty, not gonna lie, pretty dope costume in this one. Yeah, There's this is more cool like one. kind of what I feel like I would picture him to look like. Yeah, after, after being in the grave shit. for so long. Um, yeah, he looked like a piece of shit. Like, oh yeah, this <laughs> is so weird. Do you have the uh, the poster of this movie? Uh, I'm not sure actually. I can bring it up if you need me. To. Yeah, I do because I'm not sure if it's I. It's like the, the, I. This is like I don't know. All of them are they stick out to me as a kid, right? And uh, I thought this poster was pretty cool. It is. Uh, it is definitely unique. In, in some ways, and it's I remember seeing this as a kid, right? Yeah. And I was like, that's cool. Who's this girl? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's uh it's a it's a pretty cool a lot of the, the posters, other than five, like there's different there's different um covers of the movie, but part part five is definitely the weakest where it's just like this this mask with the eyes lit up. But this is a cool design, I think, and different. You're like, what is this one about? Everyone was so nostalgic to me. And so like, I was always so excited to watch these, which is such a, if you don't understand the love for it, it, it's, it's so, I don't know. It just, I just remember like being so excited to see this, these movies and, and especially the cover just always like drew me in. Right. For people who don't know, then let's give them a quick plot summary. So the film introduces Tina Shepard, a teenager with powerful telekinetic abilities who accidentally kills her abusive father at crystal lake years later tina returns to the lake with her mother and doctor to face her trauma her telekinetic powers unintentionally resurrect jason Voorhees, who was previously trained chained at the bottom of the lake by tommy jarvis jason embarks on another killing spree and tina must use her psychic abilities to stop now i will say uh, she kills her abusive uh, father and then the father comes out to help her. What? And he looks like fucking, I don't know, some weird like extra off of like Pirates of the Caribbean or something. It's awful. It's so bad. Why? Why, man? And of course they have that dumb montage at the beginning. And then that narrator, like, well, who is that guy? He's, and then the boy, he's like, people forget he's down there sometimes. He's down there. Sometimes they forget that he's down there. He's waiting. He's waiting there. It's just weird that this weird narration montage. Uh, I could not. I could. That could could have gone. I didn't. I didn't need that. I've seen the other movies. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. And I feel like every time they do that, it's like uh, I don't know. It's like they're trying to appeal to a whole new audience again or something by I doing know. that. So it's like we have to give this exposition again, even though it's been a year. Or yeah. <laughs> like this has it really gone that stale in twelve fucking months and. Has anybody who who is going to see this never heard of Friday the Thirteenth before this at this point? Surely not. Like I oh, know Jason would be so pruny down there, though. You know. Yeah. I wonder yeah. what his wiener would be like. Yeah, it's falling off. Actually, though, know, would it would it not from him being um like down underwater like that? Would it not end up blowing up and be like a big fucking like grapefruit? Do you, I know all the water is so gross. I was going to say, like, do you think he has like the, um, the, 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 I can't, so I'm like, how do I say this? The bit, the big retard wiener. Oh, so bad. Sorry, everybody, but it's bad, but you know what I mean? Because yeah, probably, you know, so it's like I'm glad we never got porn. that, but I'm guaranteed there is a, um, there is a Friday 13th, um, porno out there. 
There's a, an image for everybody now. A baby's arm holding an apple. So weird. All right. And if you guys are, oh, I cannot bring that up on screen. I'll try, how do I bring this up on screen without the rest of the things that are like showing up? It's very weird. Oh, I just, yeah. oh, wow. I guess it, can I put my, I can't put it over. Damn. Like how do, marks the first time that Kane Hodder played Jason Voorhees. Yeah. So if you guys are wondering and you, uh, you're bored tonight, check this out. By uh, zero tolerance, uh, it is the official Friday Thirteenth uh, parody board. Is it board. safe? Is it safe to bring up on screen? Yes, it is safe. It's safe. There you go. The screen, the thing behind it is not safe. That's why I clicked on the image. Uh, but yeah, this is if you're if you're wondering. Oh no, now I'm getting pop ups. This is not good. <laughs> yeah, <we're doing> <laughs> yeah, I could not bring up the Google search of that because there is a bunch of cartoon boobies. This is so weird. It's just the things that people will do, man. The things that people do is so weird, and I don't understand it. Um, okay, can okay, I, you have to bring up this on screen. Okay. <laughs> what is that? That's on <laughs> Pornhub, man. Okay, get get it off the screen now, because if I click away, it's gonna do all this stuff. Oh my god! Yeah. Whoa! What the fuck? <laughs> It's the weirdest shit, man, that people do. It's really muscular Jason uh, naked with a huge wang. This is, man, some of the shit that people do. I don't understand it. I don't know why they they think it's necessary to create, like, everything. What's that thing? It's like uh, Rule 34 where it's like if there's a porno, somebody's if, if there's a thing, somebody's made a porno about it. Oh, man. Why did I Google this? I know, yeah. I done it as well. You've been talking about it so much now. I, I did you see that one of Jason? I, <laughs> I, yeah, I can see even you have the shared screen thing down at the bottom, and I can still kind of see it. <laughs> this you know? one is so gross. What the fuck, like, man? What in the fuck? So if People anybody so wants to be psychotic. scared, go and check that out. Just Google um, Friday Thirteenth porn. You'll have an you'll have an enjoyable time. Um, so weird. Yeah, like I said, this is the first time Kane <laughs> Hodder plays. Uh, Jason Voorhees. Yeah, this yeah, movie yeah. received yet again mixed reviews. Critics praised Kane Hodder's performance as Jason and the film's unique twist with the introduction of a telekinetic protagonist. However, he's a better also... Jason, that's for sure. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, however, this movie was also criticized for its lack of character development and the heavy censorship that diluted the gore and violence. Well, yeah. uh, it it definitely did, and uh, so it's. The Jason versus Carrie concept was a very last minute pitch, I guess. Following the Friday Thirteenth Part uh, Six, Jason Lives, as you have up on screen, Paramount began negotiating with New Line Cinema for a crossover film with A Nightmare on Elm Street, Killer Freddy Krueger, which eventually we did get. When negotiations for that fell through, the studio chose to produce a, a new Friday Thirteenth sequel instead, associated with Barbara Sachs envision a new movie inspired by Jaws about land developer building condos at to sell at. Uh, Crystal uh, Crystal Lake, covering up Jason's murder sprees, making profit, which would have been actually clever. Can you pull off Jason Lives off the screen and put out the actual poster of this movie? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, and then, although Sax was hopeful for a movie would win an Academy Award, <laughs> weird, hired screenwriter Daryl Haney wanted to do something different. After pitching several ideas, Sax turned it down. And then Henry's final concept captured her attention. There was always a teenage girl who was left to battle Jason by herself. Usually, yes, this women were for somehow a lot stronger than the men when it come to how long they survived. And uh, Haney recalls in Peter M. Backbrack's Crystal Lake Memories, what if the girl had telekinesis powers, or telekinetic powers, intrigued the premise. It is interesting, because that's what I said would be a clever idea of doing it nowadays, is you know, maybe at Crystal Camp Lake, now there's a bunch of, um, what's that called? I said it in the, where people rent out their stuff, rent out their house. What's that called again? You know what I'm talking about. Airbnb. Airbnb, like kind of like very, you know, rich people in their condo. That's interesting that they actually had that idea. I didn't know that. And I think it would have probably made a better movie. Maybe. Yeah. You know, she wanted well, to win an Academy Award. I something I'm noticing reoccurring as well. If you if you listen to commentaries, if you've read any books about these movies, if you even just do a quick Google search, yeah. Uh, the director and a lot of like the team in every movie mention budget constraints. And yes, like trimming of funds, which is 
kind of mad when you think about it. Like it's it's in the eighties, right? You release some one of these every twelve months. You're expecting it to be turned around and ready, you know, shot, edited, everything done within twelve months and ready to go. You're making, you know, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty million off of one movie, and like true gritted teeth, they're giving these people like two million dollars barely. I know, and you're gonna make your money. It's just really odd, like that they can't. You know that they couldn't commit to anything. It always seems to like stick around like two, two to three million max, yep. and yep. then they give them three million, and then by the time the shoot is happening, it's like, well, no, it's like two point five, or it's like two point two, or actually, no, it's like one point eight. It's like, why are you doing that? Though you know you're going to make a shit ton of money. What's the problem? Like, are you trying to completely dilute the franchise altogether, make it garbage, and then you make no money? Exactly. A, a lot of people saying that a lot of the executives in Paramount and stuff didn't really like horror or the idea of like Paramount having one of their like, you know, 10 like flagship movie series yeah, being yeah. a horror franchise, especially one like Friday the 13th. So some people reckon, I don't know if it's like a conspiracy or whatever, but there was a group of these executives who purposely tried to like sabotage the budgets and stuff to make the movies fail so they could be like see look we need to take it off the slate it's garbage no one wants to see it weird who knows right that's quite a possible thing right like makes it but it's so weird then give it up then it's yeah sell it to not line cinema and we'll see how garbage it gets going there you know what i mean like realistically um you know how i was shitting on the narrator you know who the narrator was it was crazy ralph yeah isn't that weird i did not know that so weird. I was like, I guess I kind of it's kind of fun, I guess. Um, yeah, but again, same two two point seven million budget yeah, apparently made nineteen point one million, a little bit of a lower kill count in this one at sixteen. Yeah, Obviously, we'll I'll get to it later. Narrator of the opening is Walt Gorney, who played Crazy Ralph in previous films. Originally it was supposed to be Freddy bad. versus Jason, however, the studio could not reach a deal and the story was reworked. Movie serves as the longest Jason appears on screen, unmasked. Yeah, not bad. Uh, hopes of seeing an uncut version were dashed when it was revealed the studio had all footage destroyed. All that remains is bootleg work prints in extreme. Wow. Movies. Why, man? Oh, I hate, I hate no. new studios. I don't, I, I can't understand. Like, do you not like money? I know, it's so weird, dude. Think about, right, all the things that we like from back in, in this era that you could sell to, like, like we just talked about a few minutes ago. We both owned plastic toys from movies <laughs> like this. Yeah. So like you can sell me on these unrated versions of movies. Like if someone told me that they were able to re-release all these movies and it included the fully like unrated versions of all the kills, all the nudity, all the everything and added all that to it. Yeah. I'm going to want to see that. I know. And there's so many movies like that too, where it's like they cut so much stuff from it. Um, but one thing, we, like Jason is a killing machine in this movie. Uh, I do dig that. And you finally get the sleeping bag kill. It's only a one one clock to the tree, but it, he did swing a chick in a sleeping bag at a tree. And then obviously once we eventually, uh, just after this, get Jason X, um, where he, he furiously beats chicks off of trees. It's so weird, right? such a i don't know and then and i don't know we might release it for a little but uh there is there is things within um jason goes to hell that are like kind of similar of them like reaching and trying to like do something different and it's so it does not pan out and it's kind of terrible so i do love some of the kills in this though to be fair do you like the mom's haircut do you love do you love that haircut that she has i don't know if i do i, I don't think i have it though I'll see if I can bring it up. Uh, it's like, it's such a nostalgic 80s cut. And I'm like, why? Why do they have? Why? Is she, look at this shit, man. Why? There you go. Why? It's such a bizarre. Uh, it's such a different time. You don't see any. Well, actually, there was one lady that we live next door to. And she did not let the 80s go. And she had this exact same haircut. And we're, we're even like, me and Chelsea are like, man, she needs to let that go. Do you know what's even scarier? Let it go. You've seen it like when, when chicks, like you said, like that woman you're talking about that won't let it go, right? Yeah. And they, probably, so they probably had that haircut 
back then where it's kind of longer at the back but now they've progressed into like the modern day version where they still have that hair on the top but then they cut the rest of it short oh, man. it looks like a mullet man it's like this weird fucking like parting yeah, thing here where so it's weird. Like what was with, i don't what was with the 80s and big hair like I'm, it's such a weird thing yeah not really for me um depends depends um i do on. not really get why the dad comes back and kills jason yeah, it's a bit strange. Yeah, it's the right? stupidest thing. I saw an image of him. I'm like, so dumb, man. Do um, do any of these taglines tickle your fancy? Her mind awoke Jason from the dead. That's it. Yep. No. On Friday the thirteenth, Jason is back, but this time he's met his match. Oh, that's cute. They're gonna go on a date. Matchmaker in hell. Uh, on Friday the thirteenth, Jason will meet his match. Terrible. <laughs> Jason is back. But this time someone's waiting. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, and then on Friday the 13th, Jason's back. <laughs> Wait, oh my God. Like, so bad. They are all, they're the worst I think we've had in a while. Yeah, that's pretty bad. All these were garbage. I will say yeah. that. Our piles of, piles of uh, garbage. Uh, there's the dad. Yeah, oh yeah. Looks like, it looks like weird. fucking one of like Davy Jones' henchmen from Pirates. I know. Harry. I just don't understand why she killed him because he was abusive and then he comes back to save her somehow. And, but it's really like, I don't really get it the way there's there's parts in, in the movie where she's like talking to the, like the mother creepy. character. Oh, she's that's like, that's creepy. Oh, mom, mom, I miss him so much. I know, but what did like, she kill him for being didn't you say, like, isn't he some big abusive dickhead? And we have that weird scene. Remember where she's like, before he dies, and like it has like uh I think I'm assuming it's supposed to be the mother. She's like you I wish you'd stop drinking or you can't drink anymore or something like that. And he's like, You don't tell me what to do. And then <laughs> like, yeah. I'm See, like, and yeah. then it's just weird that he's a savior at the end. Also, I don't know if you know, but they reference the dude. See the way the face is split. Oh yeah. On that, yeah, so he, yeah. he is referenced by like the the crew or whatever as the coochie cut face. Oh, that's really funny. Weird. It's kind of gross though to begin with. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> A little bit gross. There is some fun kills like that. The noisemaker to the to the face is is a weird one. Um, it, you know, and and I'm really bothered by the nerdy chick. There's something about her that I just I want her to die. The one that like does the makeover and like he's trying to get laid or whatever. And it's just like, there's something about her. And I remember this when I watched it as a kid that I just like did not like her. Something about her. Something about her reminded me of somebody I knew or something. And I was like, just don't like it. The party yeah, scene's kind of fun. I'm glad she died. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, there, there's actually quite a few like cool scenes to be fair. Um, Do you remember when the doctor sacrifices the mom? <laughs> like the asshole that he is. You know what, right? He holds her in front of him. I, I kind of like that though, because <laughs> you've got to lean into like whatever the character is supposed to be. And like yeah, yeah. at that point, they kind of showed him to be some weird, like kind of creepy, like leech kind of yes, a character. And I'm like, you know what? That's, that's exactly what he would do. If I was that guy and I behaved like him, the first thing I would do would be like, hey, I'm going to use her as a human shield. Yeah, I know, so weird. And uh and there's a like the the practical effects are pretty decent in this. Jason's makeup is pretty awesome. Like he's now developed as this grungy looking character from the depths of the lake. So I do uh I do think that is pretty fun and there's some cool kills. This is definitely a different one. I'll say that I I even like the psychic sh the psychic showdown at the end when she's like throwing nails at him and 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 doing the and like doing like crushing the mask into his face and it splits open like there is some fun oh, stuff when, to do with it. The, the straps are going into the back of his head. Yeah, there's some cool like, like, practical she, effects. Like, oozing out of his head. Yeah, and, the like, goo. Fucking rancid. There is a really weird bit, and I don't know why I I wrote it down and it, it stood out to me. Um. After the doctor guy or whatever, he therapist or whatever, uh, when he sacrifices the 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 mom and whatever, and, do. yeah, and then after a while, doesn't the main chick come across him in the woods? Yeah, I think so. She, well, weird. 
she walks on on camera right from like the from right to left and as she walks he's just in the background right and there's like some trees i'm assuming i don't know if they're like fake trees or whatever they put extra trees in and like they have no leaves running on on the trees or anything like that but there's like two branches that are like this and he's literally just standing <laughs> i know i know he waits for her to pass by and then he's going like do not listen i'm like wow yeah, that was like incredibly cringy it's like a stage play it was there's some yeah there's definitely some weak scenes in this and, and it's just that's so weird and then it's just fine that jason like he always kind of does this throughout films like there's some different uh ones you know when he has the bodies in the cabin in uh, i think the third one or second one um but then this one he like displays his work i said it's funny how he's just he's like look over here look at she's in a tree she's cutting ha- like whatever it is and it's just like look at my work everybody you like it and it's like all in the same spot like he took his time to drag the bodies there set them up elaborately like there's so- he's some sort of serial killer that's like showing off his work to the police you know I'd be like look at look at this you know i'm fancy i kind of like how aggressive he is as well yes that's why i said he's pretty brutal in this and uh yeah i do enjoy do you want to go through some uh, do you want me to go through some of the kills yeah sure why not so we got we got John Shepard drowning Crystal Lake. Yes, we do. Jane, ten spike to the neck, impaled to a tree. Michael, ten spike thrown at his back, into his back. Dan, Jason's punched through the chest and neck broken. Yes. Uh, Judy, slammed against a tree in her sleeping bag. Thank God Judy's dead. Russell, axe swing to the face. Sandra, pulled underwater, drowned. Maddie, uh, she had that scythe through the neck. That was pretty fun. Ben, head crushed in Jason's bare hands. Kate, party horn in the eye. David, butcher knife to the stomach, beheaded off screen. Eddie, throat slice with a machete. Robin, thrown through a window. Amanda Shepard, impaled through the chest from uh, behind with a, a brush hook. Brush hook? Nice, whatever that is. Dr. Cruz, trim, trim, tr- tree trimming saw to the stomach. Melissa, axe to the face. Nice. Melissa acts to the face and doesn't she is there is this the one where he doesn't he kill a chick and then he like fucks her across the room like tosses her yeah I think so yeah because there's some really goofy ones like that are just like I don't remember if it's the, I just remember there's one of them that really stuck out to me where I was like whoever done the like whatever chick done the stunt for that really sold being thrown because yeah. like she doesn't put her hands out in front of her. I think she flies with her hands by her side and <laughs> plays head first across the room. Like she's uh, with a Superman from the 80s. Where he's I was like, like, that is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> I love that. So weird. Um, I will give this one. Uh, I'll, I'm not going to lie. Like, I do enjoy this one, but it is. And I do enjoy the James is hard, man, because I want to be kind of critical. I'll give it like a 6.8 because there are some really yeah. goofy like. You know, probably it's, go to, yeah, six point five, maybe. Yeah, Somewhere there's a stretch in a lot of the stuff in this of what they're trying to pull off. Yeah, I feel like that's a, a pretty fair. Um, <clears throat> I feel like that's a pretty fair score, like six point yeah. five, six point eight, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um. Okay, so let's move on to the final part of this second part of the deep dive, and maybe one of the most bizarre. Um, yeah. I remember exactly where I was when I watched this. Yeah, this one was... I remember when I heard about this, I was like, wait a second, what? What is this? But the poster is so dope, though. And he's not even in New York, but the, like... <clears throat> see, this one is the one I really remember. Like, uh, it's every poster has always been nostalgic to me. I remember, like, where I was... Uh, pull this up on screen quick. Is just this look was just yeah. such a cool poster. Oh, it cool. was so sweet, man. And I remember so- where I was. Even the I love NY one. Oh yeah, so cool. Like just anything like that, I'm sold instantly. Didn't yeah. scream they recently like kind Copy of stole that. that. Yeah, they copied it. Yeah, yeah. Very uh he's definitely got the worst face in this one. We'll bring that up later. But uh like yeah. Yeah, get get into it. But I do remember I remember when I was with this kid Ben. Um, you know, I remember being in his apartment building where he's living as dads, and we rented this. I think his dad actually had this movie because uh, I was, we were going to, 
watch Hamburger Hill. When I was a kid, for some reason, I thought Hamburger Hill was about a hamburger that killed people. I was like very young. I was like 10. I swear, And it was a, a war movie and we stopped it instantly. And then we realized that Jason, we had Jason Takes Manhattan. I can remember. I think we might have rented it. I th- Oh, I do. We did. We went to uh, Roger's video. And we rented Jason Takes Manhattan. I was very excited. I was like 10. Uh, first time he's sleeping over at this kid's house. Uh, you know, and then I remember we put it in. And I enjoyed it for what it was. Because at least Jason. Jason looks pretty gnarly. Uh, there's obviously some very disappointing things within this. But he looks pretty cool. I do like the character look of him. And there is some fun kills in this. But it is uh, re-watching it. I was kind of... Uh, more disappointed than I thought I would be in some ways. Yeah. It's a it's a strange one. Um, so yeah, we're talking about Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan. Released on July 28th, 1989, directed by Robert Hedden. Um, produced and distributed by Paramount. This time, a longer runtime, actually, of 100 minutes. Yeah, I noticed Estimated- that. Estimated budget five million dollars apparently, and it only made fourteen point three million at the box office. Um, plot summary: The film follows a group of high school graduates on a cruise ship bound for New York City. Jason Voorhees, resurrected once again, boards the ship and begins a killing spree. The survivors eventually reach Manhattan, where the final showdown with Jason takes place in the urban environment. This film shifts from the usual camp and forest settings. To the yes, bustling so streets and underground sewers of New York City. Q eighties music. Yeah, you know what I mean, like it's definitely like very eighties. Did you know that Tina almost returned? Did you know that uh, the new blood established uh, Lar Parker Lincoln Lincoln's Tina Shepard as Jason's new nemesis, using the powers of her mind with the help of her molesting dad. Uh, Tina ba- banishes Jason back to the bottom of the lake following her, him massacring her friends. Pleased with how the new blood turned out, I guess, director John Carl Belcher, whatever his name was, began to develop a sequel which would bring back Lincoln as Tina, the character um, released from an insane asylum. Additionally, uh, Tina herself uh, and uh, well, Lincoln had co-wrote an alternative screenplay. Well, that's pretty interesting, which brought her back with Tina now working as a psychologist. Another potential script was written by Kevin Sprittis, who played uh, played surviving character Nick in New Blood. That's interesting. His idea was for Nick to be the killer in the next Friday the 13th movie, revealing the event- events of New Blood uh, to be a dream. That sounds terrible. That sounds actually worse than what this was, not going to lie. Yeah. Actually, I'm glad that that didn't happen because I feel like it would have been terrible. The low budget, limited time, limited Jason's time in Manhattan. Uh, you can get into that if you want because that's funny. Here we go. Actually, this might have some better taglines this time around. Um, I love NY. Okay, that's is that even a tagline? No, oh, yeah. The city that has seen it all ain't seen nothing yet. It's <laughs> really bad. The biggest city in the world is about to be scared down to size. That's trying to be clever, but there's something missing about it. I don't know. Life in the city is murder. And it's okay. It's okay. New York has a new problem. Mm, no, no. The like big it. apples in big trouble. Kind of like that. That's fine. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> the best of a bad bunch. There to be honest. Red. Um also just some extra trivia. We also talked we already talked about the, the budget of five million, box office of just over 14. This one comes in a little bit of a higher kill count at 19. Yeah. Uh, Rob Hedden had written more of the movie in New York City, scenes in Madison Square Garden on the Brooklyn Bridge, Statue of Liberty and Empire State Building, but the budget didn't allow any of this. <laughs> At 100 minutes, it has the longest runtime in the series. The poor performance at the box office led to Paramount selling the rights to New Line Cinema. The original script had Jason being melted by the toxic waste and his soul being released. This was changed to allow for sequels. Dude, this would have been way better if they actually like took the time to actually put in more in New York because um, 
On paper, the concept of Jason and Hatton seems pretty exciting. His mayhem always has been limited to rural areas around Crystal Camp Lake in previous movies. <clears throat> Having him venture through a big city would certainly be new for the franchise, if nothing else. However, it seems Jason's time in the Big Apple isn't very long, as the bulk of the sequel scenes scene time is spent in a cruise ship. So what gives? Well, writer-director Rob he didn't, whatever his name is, had every intention on using Manhattan setting to be the fullest when he drafted the original screenplay. Everything about New York was going to be completely exploited and milked. He described that there was going to be a tremendous scene on the Brooklyn Bridge, a boxing match in Madison Square Garden. Jason would go through a department stores. He would go through Times Square. He'd be, he would go into a Broadway play. He'd even crawl on top of the Statue of Liberty and dive off. That does not sound like that would have went well. Um, don't know why. They would have like, I just picture him um, like Rip fucking remember. No, do you know, do you remember how bad the graphics were? Remember in Superman 4, I think it was a quest for peace. Superman was against that other guy that Gene Hackman had. He had like long blonde that. hair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. No, we have to get this up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, unfortunately these ideas were too expensive in practice and Paramount wasn't willing to foot the bill for the extravagant scenes. This could have been so cool, man. It could have been so cool. You know, it could have been so much fucking better. Why do they... I don't know, man. Fucking Paramount, man. That it is sweet. strange how they do that stuff, though, right? You know what I'm saying? It's terrible. I know. It's just so weird to me. Um, like like that idea of being on top of the, the uh, Statue of Liberty and jumping off. I'm like, what are you trying to bring up? What did you need to show me? <laughs> I'm just getting it here now while I'm talking. Um, but like wh whoever, and I don't care if it was back in the eighties, whenever it was, yeah. like anybody would say that and go, "That sounds like a really good idea." Having uh, him run through the the Statue of Liberty and chase them up it, and then toss somebody off, maybe, but him doing like some sort of swan dive or something off the, it doesn't make sense. I don't know why you'd have that. Like, why would he dive off of it? Uh, unless somebody kicked him off or something. But even at that, like, it's like what? Well, what? Well, he's just gonna fly down, like smash off the ground and be okay or I don't know it bothers me but everything else sounds pretty cool the boxing match in Times Square and having him kind of go through that and and busting into a Broadway play all right you this should make sure it's muted so we don't get copyright look at that shit like <laughs> it's just so bad everything about very it. weird man it's oh like man so awful some of the funnest movies to watch are the trashiest ones so look at how terrible the graphics are isn't he like all broken now? He's a very broken person. He he had an accident. He fell off a horse or something. Didn't he? Like Parkinson's broke. or something? I might maybe no, that's the other guy. Something bad happened to him. He looked rough. Let's just say that. You remember the guy from the Superman show? Now I'm like, oh, we gotta get back into Jason. Remember that one guy he played like on the Superman show? So weird. The curly Q, it was so bad, man. Some of those movie shows. They really tried to milk that whole thing. Not a fan of uh, Superman, not going to lie. Uh, I think I Batman should have kicked his ass more. 52. Huh. I love Ben Affleck's Batman, and everyone can shit on me, but best Batman ever. Real Batman. That's Batman. Looks like Batman, acts like Batman. He is Batman. Uh, Chris, what's that guy? Christopher Bale? Chris, Chris, what's that guy? Some Bale? Christopher, Christian Bale? Bale? Christian Bale. He was the worst Batman. Good movies, worst Batman. Skinny Batman, don't like it. Neck cow, weird head. I don't like it. Not my thing. No, skinny Batman, get out of here. You know that, that them original Superman movies with Christopher Reeve and like those ones we were watching, they were making like $300 million. I'm sure they were. People love those. And worst graphics ever. So weird. Um, yeah, he had some uh, uh, equestrian accident. Weird. Um, something bad sure. happened. Yeah, he fell so off the horse and he was holding on to the reins. His hands became uh -oh. tangled in him, and shit was pulled off the horse. He landed head first on the far side of the fence, shattering his first and second vertebra, resulting wow. in cervical spinal injury, paralyzing him from the neck down and halting his breathing. That's sad, man. It's crazy. Why did God do that to him? You know okay. what I mean? 
Grim. It's very weird. God is comical in some ways, you know? And you know what I find? No, it bothers me. It's fucking weird. The boy that they show drowning is like a normal kid. He has no deformities at all. It doesn't even make sense. Well, I'm like, I put, we can't spend money on makeup today. <laughs> it's like, it's so yeah, weird. weird. And, and like then later. Seeing him in the cruise ship or whatever, and they see him out through, you know, the like circular windows. Yeah, and, like, and he, But he's like. I, it's so weird. So many bad things. Why is she seeing visions of him as a kid too? It, there's so many bad script writing within this one. And I notice it more and more now. Um, there is some, there is some scenes I love. Look at that face, man. I know. I know. Oh. Like, how is that even real? Like I, at all? I know. I put, Oh, we're going to go with the electrocution again to bring him back from the dead. And it's such a cheap, way of doing it oh no the guy his the, the boat it's just oh he puts down the anchor and then somehow electricity runs through the anchor and then it's so oh man cheesy and the first yeah. two kills are weak as <laughs> not great um this movie received largely negative reviews as you can imagine from critics I'm sure uh, it was criticized for its misleading title yes uh, as much of the film takes place on a boat rather than in manhattan Fans also lamented the toned-down violence and lack of iconic New York landmarks. However, it has gained a cult following for its unique setting and some memorable scenes. I feel yeah. like when he kicks over the fucking thing in Times Square, Very that's quite right. memorable. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, uh, and then he shows his face to them, and they're like, oh, "What? Where, what does the kid say? Uh, I have it somewhere here. Uh, he, you're you're dead meat slime box." And then he's like, "Oh no, never mind, man. You're you fine. Get out of here. You know what I mean? They like run away. There are some iconic scenes, but it's also disappointing. And there's weird stuff like where does he get the mask from? The guy, some the kids, he somehow has the mask and it has the cut in it. You know what I mean? When he like, yeah. he, I don't know. It's so weird. And the, the face is so one of the one of the worst. They definitely do a cheap way of filming this, man. And then you got that chick that looks like a hot version of Joey Ramone. So weird. It's, um, I know there's a lot of like strange things about this. I'm not sure like where the idea came yeah. from. I, I don't like, would that have been a good idea even back then? Like if somebody had said to yeah. you the idea of Jason takes Manhattan. I don't know. I think if you if you told me there and then, right, we're going to make a movie called Jason Takes Manhattan, but we're not actually really going to be in Manhattan at all. I know. So like, well, then there's no point. Let's just not do it. Let's just do fucking Jason is back at Camp Crystal Lake again. Yeah, I know. It is so weird because the idea of putting him in the big city seems like a fun idea. Yeah. But it. They didn't deliver on it. So what was the point of doing it really? And they got obviously all these budget cuts. And and this is one where the we have the weakest kills ever. The, the there is the, some of the worst kills. They don't show a lot. Um the the, the violence and gore is definitely toned down uh to a large extent. Uh, this is weird. The screenplay for the movie is different from the final version of the film in many ways, with some bigger than others. One small change came on set as one of the actors refused to do what was written, though this still was a call, uh, though this still a call that was probably for the best. Initially, Jason Voorhees would encounter a dog barking at him uh, upon exiting the water in New York City. In response, Jason would have furiously kicked the living shit out of the dog, presumably killing the animal. When learning about this intended scene, Jason actor Kane Hodder refused to shoot it, feeling like it would be unbefitting to the, of the character. Director Rob Hayden he agreed, and the moment was axed without being filmed. If you're like me and you can't stand when dogs are killed in horror movies, you'll agree that obviously getting rid of this by the right decision. Nobody likes when Michael Myers slaughters that dog. You know, so... I guess the initially the director wanted more nudity too. That's sad. There's some weird stuff like the the kill with the guitar. Yeah. I'm like, uh, can take or leave that as a bit garbage. I know. Also, like the I look, I know I'm not expecting like I obviously know you have to like suspend your expectations or whatever, and not ask too much of it, but why is that chick down in like the bowels of the ship? 
playing guitar. I just playing guitar. That scene is so cringy, man. And then that nerdy dude, it, like, and they're trying to like trick the uh, the professor. She's just you like know? I remember that. Like, was, I found that really jarring. I was like, okay, so she's like away from everybody else, down in like the fucking engine room or whatever. Yeah, there's some just, stupid. Just, like, just, she looks like Joe Joey uh, Joey Ramone, just like this is not so deformed looking because Joey Ramone did look like some sort of. He could be a horror villain in his own right, you know. How do you feel about uh, the head getting punched off? That's a fun scene when it's like, and they're doing the boxing scene. That's one of the most, uh, one of the more memorable scenes of of the uh, film. Um, so weird. Jason watering vomit is real. When the trademark unmasked Jason occurs towards the end of the film, where he looks horrible. And his grotesque face is revealed after toxic waste, be, uh, waste begins to melt his body. We can see Jason vomiting a large amount of water as he starts breaking down. It was one of the last things to see him do before the killer transforms into how he appeared as a child when he drowns. And all of a sudden, like, you know, and then later on, like in the beginning of it, when he drowns, he looks like a normal kid. Then he later looks deformed. There's a very, there's uh, not coherent script writing in this at all. The vomiting in the scene appears to be an excellent special effects, but it's not. Kane Hodder apparently had a pension for being able to vomit at will. And this is legitimately doing it as his, he, he explains in the commentary of Jason Nixon Manhattan, he, that he drank a gallon of water an hour before shooting, willfully vomiting what remained once the cameras were pulling weird. Ha. Huh. Didn't know that. You know what else I could have really, and this might seem like quite a small, like pointless thing to say, but it was yeah. something that stuck out to me that I definitely would have, cut out and alluded to a bit better is the scene where he comes ashore or whatever you want to call it in that small boat yeah and then he climbs up the anchor of the cruise ship yeah i don't know why right but just like the the image of him climbing that and like his big muscular like veiny arms and stuff yeah so, you know like i feel like i I would want you obviously to tell me that he's gotten onto the ship, but I don't know if I want to see him climb up. I know. Thing. They, there's things that they added that they didn't need to add things. Like, and I did write down that like, if it was actually on a cruise ship, that would have been fun. Yeah. That whole yeah. idea of him actually being on a cruise ship where people are there to like party and hang out would have been like a fun idea, but they they went in a different direction than had him on some like steam ship or whatever. It's some like, yeah, I don't know. So even the concept of that telling me like, Oh, Jason goes on a cruise ship and like kills a bunch of people. I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to see that. I'd love to make that myself. But then when, when you, yeah, when you first see the ship, it's like, that's like some shit you see going out to like, I don't know, like the North pole or something. I know. I don't know why they chose that. It looks um, like some weird, like knockoff Titanic, tiny little ship. And then, like, just all the scenes, like, didn't from there. Then I'm going, like, okay, all right, why? What? So this thing looks like a big industrial, like, shit heap. But then there's like a sauna, a dance floor. Like, there's a fucking boxing club. I know. Um, what is this so random? Like, it is very random. And the 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 you have like that dance floor scene, which is kind of iconic, where it's like panning to different. She's all scared, and you see like him popping out of nowhere. Uh, that was semi fun. I do definitely remember that scene when I was a kid, but it is a lot of things lacking. There's very cheap kills. There's, you know, it's just so weird, man. I don't understand it. It's and then so the dad traumatizing his little girl, like just throwing her in the water, telling her Jason's going to get her. And that whole thing is weird. And then like, he's down there. He was actually down there. And then it's just like, Oh, she knows him from a kid. Cause her dad was trying to traumatize her to get her to swim. So weird. this is definitely uh, at this point again, it had, I was on like, say such a high from the last couple of movies. Yeah, yeah. And then like this movie just takes a, a big dip for me where I'm like, there's definitely a concept here for some really cool movies. Yeah. And they I think, pull through. like, yeah, like you said, if this had been shot on an actual cruise ship, I would have been happy if we never even got to Manhattan. Just don't call it anything to do with Manhattan and just have it like part eight fucking yeah. J Jason goes on a cruise ship. Yeah, I know. 
and like just leave it at that like but have an actual huge cruise ship because then you've got a, a lot of room to play with like okay well i can see now he could technically be able to like disappear and reappear in places on the ship yeah, whereas yeah. this ship looked way too small at the dock as well i, I know like, two minutes out. where is all this shit all this dance floors and songs. It's so weak. No, they should do, right? They should have done Jason versus Waterboy. That would have been a pretty good movie. <laughs> Uses his because technically water is his like arch enemy. You the know, technically. Cards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So it could have been. But there's some there was obviously some fun stuff that happened with promoting this film when Jason Takes Manhattan was released in 1989. Produ- and it could have been what was so much better. There could have been more money into this. Producers were looking to promote the movie as much as they could because obviously they made it trashy. The, this led to the TV appearance on our Arsenio Hall show with Jace Voorhees as seen in the film appearing as a special guest. Of course, this is really Kane Hodder in costume as Jason, though he wouldn't break character once with the entire appearance on the show. Arsenio uh, is visibly nervous as he asks Jason's uh, various questions. A mute Jason does not respond in any way uh, beyond staring coldly at Arsenio in return. And Arsenio uh, criticizes the low body count in Jason takes Manhattan. Apparently, Jason appears to get a little agitated by the end clip, Arsenio goes to handshake, and only for Jason to pull him in close to put a little scare jump uh, jump scare on the TV show host. Looking back, the segment remains one of the b- most bizarre talk show appearances of all time. Yeah, it is very weird. Do you want me to get into the kills? I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right, we're back with the kill. Kill count for Frather Teeth takes Manhattan. You know that that old that old chestnut. Jason, uh, Jim stabbed with a spear gun. Susie stabbed with a spear. JJ bashed in the head with electric guitar. Boxer hot, son of rocks to the chest. All of these were very weak. Tamara stabbed with multiple mirror sh- shads, shards, I mean. Jim Carson harpooned in the back. Admiral Robinson throat slit with a knife. Eva strangled. Crew member accidentally shot by Wayne. That's a fun kill. Wayne electrocuted on a control panel. That was probably one of the best graphics they had throughout the whole film. Miles impaled on an antenna. Deckhand axe on the back. Gangbanger number one stabbed through the back with his own syringe. Gangbanger number two bashed and scalped on a steam pipe. Julius decapitated by a punch. Irish cop dragged into an alley and killed off screen. Colin Van Dusen blown up with a car explosion. Charles, whatever his last name is, uh, drowned in a barrel of sewage. Sanitation worker bashed in the head with a wrench. Now, a lot of them were pretty weak. Like they didn't show a lot. It's just yeah. very quick and not a yeah. lot of like practical effects that they put into it. And disappointing. I think as well. Sorry like if the- you hear my wife vacuuming. We're in a furious claim to clean to get. Get to the cottage. So, um, so I apologize if you guys hear that. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's not my, not my fault. Oops. So, yeah, I was disappointed in this movie uh, for sure. Like, it's not an exciting way to end this uh, deep dive because it is kind of. I yeah. liked it more as a kid just because there was Jason. He was in a lot of the film. So, but as I rewatch it now, I'm kind of just disappointed, you know? It's, yeah, it, it definitely took a huge dip for me at this point where I was like, fucking hell. Like, there's there's very little, like, redeeming qualities on this one. Yeah. And for that, I'm going to give this one... Uh, Jeez, I, I, I'm going to go like quite low here, I think. I'm going to give this like a four. Maybe a four or a five. Yeah, I, I would say that too. Yeah, because it's, it's really like there's not very many redeeming qualities. And I feel like the biggest redeeming quality is having the conversation of like, oh, what if they had have got to film those scenes around the city? Yeah, this, uh Weird. I'm gonna. I want to read some people's reviews. Spoilers. Maybe the Asian chick. I got a little more than an hour before it will be done. Finds her friends dead in the shower. Doesn't scream. Just turns and runs. People experience shock and fear and sadness different. So I don't care. But 
that reaction, my issue is one, she never screams help as she's he's chasing her around when there are several people on board still. Second, she ends up in a little party, disco room, cute, whatever, places to hide. And I think you also see another floor or two as she's looking around in the center of the dance floor. Great. Does she ever leave the center of the dance floor? Nope. She just spins in circles <laughs> looking at everything for what feels like five to 10 minutes before she inevitably gets killed. Who wrote that part? I would dis- uh, I would discuss the rest of the movie, but all over the horror movie I've seen, I love Michael Myers, some of the Elm Street, Fred, whatever. Uh, it actually is the stupidest right, some of the stupidest writing I've ever. <laughs> so funny, and there's people that's giving it like some pretty good reviews. Let me start by saying Jason Voorhees is the most entertaining slasher of the 80s horror film craze, but as time flies, the movies become more painful to watch. I don't understand this plot whatsoever. Spoiler alert. So Jason has a long-term connection with a young girl who fell in the same lake as him, question mark. Now, years later at a senior cruise ship getaway to Manhattan, he wants to exact revenge, question mark taking all of his frustrations out on not so innocent children. I don't mean to compare, but Freddy's franchise makes more sense. We're taking, uh, we're taking about someone killing in your dreams. Only watch this movie. If you're new to the franchise or want to recap, otherwise, uh, this is the darkest side of the night song somehow fits in this movie. Well, I don't know what the hell that means, but, uh, yeah, a lot of people are disappointed. It's unfortunate because they could have like this could have been awesome. Yeah, it really could. it should have been. I mean, the concept lends itself well, I think, to what the franchise was, and it just should have been so much better. Yeah, some people say it's a guilty pleasure. So, I mean, it's like you said. I try to look at it through the lens now that you do, in a sense as well of like rewatchability of like how yeah. many times will I realistically watch this again and this, this is definitely, be the least one yeah this is definitely way lower than any of the others yeah i'll give it the same like a, a 3.54 yeah. like it is and and it's funny because i did enjoy it as a kid but i just think it was because i was young and i liked jason and just seeing him in a movie yeah. satisfied me to some extent yeah you would but, just take um, anything yeah you know yeah. and then um yeah yeah do you have anything is there any more fun facts about this horrible film not, not really, to be honest with you. A lot of it centers around like what could have been, to be totally yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, there, there is nothing else. And even in when I listen to the director's commentary and stuff, you can just tell there's a little bit of they're quite. It's quite an interesting listen. They're still quite positive and stuff, but there's a lot of alluding to like, well, we did actually want to do this, and well, so sad, we man. Actually, we do that, and we did actually plan to do this, and we did try and do that, and it's just all fucking. I mean, uh, all. Bar, I think the Times Square thing. Yeah. Any other piece where you're supposed to see him in Manhattan is um Vancouver dressed. Of up course. Like- Why wouldn't you film in Toronto or something and then really go full tilt to make it try to look like New York? Yeah, no, Vancouver, just because they said it was cheaper or something. They got like tax breaks or something and they tried to like dress it up as that. Okay, now we're gonna go. What is your favorite Jason face? Let's fucking pull them up on screen. Some are very iconic. Um, what is that one in black and white? Weird. Is that the one from 2009? Because I was gonna pick that one straight away, but then I was like, I actually don't even know what that's from. That's 2009, maybe. That one from Jason Takes Manhattan is so garbage, man. It, it looks a, so like it's like a sad Muppet character that's been abused or something. It's so weird. Um, I actually kind of really like part four. You know, his like bloodied up head and the really like yeah. weird uh inbred look is kind of fun. Uh, you know, I'll say that. Uh, and then obviously number seven is kind of fun for what it is. He's unmasked Jason on screen as long as possible, and then I don't know. I'll say number four. I, I dig that look. So uh, I'm going to be quite controversial and say probably 2009. Really? Yeah. Right. I guess but, he looks scarier, but he looks but like he's I, from, um, what's that movies that you like that are really terrible? Wrong turn. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll have yeah, to cover that at some like, I do a bot. Billy kind of um, yeah. vibe. But, uh, right, okay, so let's say excluding him, uh, 
probably the OG kid. Yeah. I find that so horrifying. I don't know what it is about it. That bulbous head with the like caved in side of the face, the fucked up teeth, the weird eye. If you had to, uh, if you had to kiss one, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Jesus. I kissed the kid. Yeah, it's so weird. The kid is for yeah, because it is freaky, and that's that is very iconic over what Jason looks like. And I remember as a kid, right? That's when I was really obsessed with this stuff. That's a lot of the images that I'd pull up, especially when you watch the first one, of uh, who he actually is, and you know, you gotta get the first appearance of him. You know, yeah, these uh, I do love this whole franchise for what it is. Yes, some could have been better than others, and there's some that are very disappointing. But it is it is still a very nostalgic thing to me. And I had a lot of love for Jason Voorhees when I was a kid. I used to draw him all the time. And I was very much obsessed with it. And uh, for everybody that is watching and listening, we'll release it if Aaron wants to for a little sneak peek uh, into some of the stuff on Patreon. But we did do a commentary on uh, Jason Goes to Hell, one of the worst ones in my opinion. I would rather watch Jason Takes Manhattan. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but we did watch it. And especially if you're able to get it, you'll hear the, some of the, uh, you'll hear the audio. We'll probably just release the audio for a little bit as a, a little bit of a teaser. So if you want to hear our thoughts on that, we do go through some of the facts of the movie and, and the budget and all the stuff that was going on at the time with what they were uh, supposed to do with that movie. Uh, and it's such a weird concept. So, and you, we actually, you can watch it with us. We put the movie up on screen. Uh, you know, we, we went live stream on rumble to it cause rumble is a little more lenient and we had three, 400 people that watched it. So, uh, everybody, you know, check that out and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I don't know if Aaron feels like it, but maybe we'll release it for like a month just to, so you can hear our opinions on it. And then it kind of, if you want to really watch it with us, definitely subscribe to the Patreon. That's the best way to support the show, obviously. And eventually we'll be doing new merch designs and all that type of fun stuff. Yeah, I just mirror everything Tom said. Uh, we appreciate everyone if you've gotten this far. Yes. At the end of this second part of this, what will end up being what, like a probably four and a half hour deep dive in total. Um, which I feel I like liked it. I, I wanted to cover it, dude. You know, I wanted to get, I, there's, there's certain deep dives like I've, I've, I've said, right? Like, and I've said the Aaron off air, it's like, it's like building a house, right? You got to have the foundation of, of what has made horror, horror, what is some of the most nostalgic and classic horror films. You know, at some point I'd like to talk about the universal monsters. Like, I do think there's a good uh, thing to kind of put a base level of, of what, especially slasher films, what makes slasher film and this without you can't have you can't have a you can't have the horror genre without jason and freddy and stuff really you can't like it's just they they've are the staple that kind of keeps some of this stuff together right and very nostalgic yeah, for sure for sure 100 percent um but yeah uh make sure to check us out on social media we're probably both most active on instagram and stuff like that um i'm on instagram under first class horror we're on all the platforms so far anyway, still YouTube and everything like that. Anyone that's listened to audio, you can check out the video format of majority of the shows over on YouTube over or on Rumble. YouTube. Support Rumble. Yeah. Support um, that platform. You know, if you want to look at some of the stuff we're pulling up on screen, images, behind the scenes stuff, things like that, um, it can be quite fun. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We have some cool stuff coming up coming into i guess autumn and into halloween and shit like that so we'll have a lot of stuff to announce and a lot more content coming your way yes and, i uh, think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go full circle and finish this yeah yeah i think that's probably the, the move to be honest i think i want to do it and just get it like out of the way realistically because then we're not bouncing around then we're kind of back to it and uh for everybody watching we'll uh we'll end it on the on a, on a fun thing here just uh well, this pull up Julius getting his head knocked off. It is a fun, fun time. Just bash. Punched off. Goodbye. And then going right into the trash. <laughs> okay. Give us five star rating review. Support the show, everybody. And we love you. Kissy, kissy. Stay horny for horror, everybody. Bye, folks.